change us tonight, Lord. This is what we cry for, and we're not pretending it change us. Open our eyes that we must see. We really want to walk the paths of the ancient. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you grant us understanding. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and even understanding to the simple. We insist that we must be changed tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a glass, says we are changed. Hallelujah. May we be changed tonight in Jesus' name. Hug 20 people. Tell them it's good to see you. Good evening. Be polite enough to greet them properly. Polite enough to your destiny helper, to your wife, some of you. You are hugging your wife. Be careful. Somebody is hugging her husband. Be careful. Don't misbehave. It can work for or against you. said wife you can imagine the way the brothers behave because hallelujah god bless you please be seated no matter how fake you are you won't deceive our sisters in the mighty name of jesus and brothers you won't pray in tongues for nothing in jesus name I didn't know that he was this serious. Praise the Lord. Marriage is part of the blessings of the kingdom. Just behave and obey and you will get there. That's how it works. There's no other way. Praise God. There's no other way. Behave. Obey the word of God. And be patient. <laughs> be patient too. I'm saying this one now. Let me stress it. Be patient. Hallelujah. You're not running anywhere. Be patient. Thank you, Jesus. Financial dominion part three. Please let's get to work. Hallelujah. Some of you still have not gotten a notebook. It's, it's not good. It just shows how much you honor or dishonor what we are teaching please help somebody with a notebook use your phone your notepad or don't ping hallelujah we have a lot to cover today i'll do my best to see that we finish early the lord help me in jesus name All right, let's continue from where we stopped last week. Where did we stop? What is all this? You have the course curriculum. What did you write? Spiritual what? You see, this how this how some of you just fail exams anyhow. I said, where did we stop last week? Exam so are saying spiritual law, spiritual. We touched spiritual dimension, right? The anatomy of God's economic system. That's, that was the whole this thing. And then we looked at the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom. We touched that now. Why God blesses us. Whether you take it seriously or not. One day you will need the message. Guaranteed if you will still be alive. Hallelujah. And then we looked at the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. Hallelujah. We looked at the law of tithing. Remember? The law of seed time and harvest. We spoke about offerings, kingdom investments, first fruits. We stopped at prophet's offering. 
you didn't listen to the tape i listened to the tape almost two or three times the mp3 we stopped exactly at prophet's offering right I'm trying to remember what i said it's real it exists that's what i said hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord those of you who are just coming um please try and catch up let's define financial dominion at least that's what we are talking about This is not just a campaign to raise careless money mongers who are just roaming around trying to be rich by all means. This is a bit to teach us the principles of the kingdom and guide us, hallelujah, into biblical principles of prosperity. So what did we define financial dominion as? The ability to totally conquer lack, poverty, financial hardship, alongside the effects they create please if you are just coming catching up in this series god bless you just follow us carefully we're talking on financial dominion we started by looking at uh the concept of prosperity how that in the kingdom there are five levels hallelujah is that true or there are five areas where we measure true biblical prosperity what's number one spiritual prosperity number two mental prosperity number three bodily prosperity the prosperity of your health number four financial prosperity and number five relational prosperity god bless you so we said in the kingdom you are only prosperous if all these areas are at work are you getting my point although we are talking about financial prosperity every time you talk about prosperity in the kingdom think these five areas it's possible to excel in one area and fail in another we are trying to contend to see how god will help us so that we'll be effective in all these areas last week we talked very brief briefly about um we consider the anatomy of god's economic system the inner workings how does this thing work and we looked at the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom why god blesses us number one we said to live a comfortable life that's why god blesses us two to finance the cause of christ on the earth and i said it's god's plan for every believer to be part of providing financial resources for kingdom activities i know that there are kingdom financiers but everyone is supposed to be part of it number three is to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a practical and definite way hallelujah i told us that wealth in the kingdom is not an accomplishment it's a trust never forget this hallelujah wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement it's not an accomplishment it is a trust matthew 25 he gave he gave unto one five talents two and so on and so forth and then we looked at um the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance the first law was what the law of tithing also known as the law of open heavens uh, how that it is important for us to tithe your tithe is a tenth portion of what god gives you your increase it's not just some gimmicks by men of god to bring money out of people it's a spiritual principle leviticus 27 verse 30 malachi 3 verse 8 to 12 then we spoke about the law of seed time and harvest genesis 8 22 and then luke 6 33 i told you the law of seed time and harvest has nothing to do with money it's a spiritual principle that multiplies to you whatever you release hallelujah and then we spoke about different um givings or offerings or opportunities in the kingdom to practice the law of seed time and harvest the first is what offerings in the house of god deuteronomy 16 16 it is not good that we come to the house of god empty every time you are coming to the house of god make sure that it is predefined it is definite think well don't just come and squeeze out um bad money the house of god is not a filling station when you are coming think well plan between you and god hallelujah then we spoke about kingdom investments giving for the building of the house of the lord and for the work of the kingdom very very important we spoke about the concept of first fruit remember i please listen to that part of first fruit hallelujah 
The Bible does not make it compulsory, but it's an edge in the spirit that has lots of spiritual benefits. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Verse 10 says, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy vats or thy presses to overflow. So there are blessings that follow first fruits. And then we spoke about prophet's offering. Does it exist? Is it in the Bible? We looked at two scriptures. Second Kings chapter 8 from verse 8 to 9 and First Samuel 9. Uh, verse 3 to 13 I told you prophet's offering is real it works the only thing is that prophet's offering in our day is another name for the law of honor just your way of honoring a vessel that God has blessed you with and um, I told you that it's not appropriate as much as possible don't go to a man of God you're trusting for the grace of, his, of God upon his life to be imparted into your life. Don't just get up and go empty handed. Again don't be under pressure. To say I don't have a gift. So I cannot see a man of God. But I'm teaching you to practice it. It's a very powerful spiritual principle. As much as possible. I never see a man of God. That is greater and higher than me. Empty handed. There must be something. Hallelujah. I dashed down home. To see. Um, my father two days ago and when I went there I made sure that I packaged something and blessed him and blessed my mother it's been the culture hallelujah if you practice it it has a reward honor your father and your mother what's the reward that your days may be long please let me tell you something don't think that the bible is just joking when you see these keys these are very powerful irrefutable keys in the kingdom that means dishonor your father and your mother so that what will happen to your days as simple as that period as simple as that dishonor your father and your mother and then you shorten your days but when you honor your father and your mother it's tied to longevity okay thank you Jesus I was to talk on um just one one more and then we'll look at the natural laws there is the principle of seed faith i need to teach on the principle of seed faith but i'm thinking of leaving it um we'll use it to wrap up today's teaching right so let's continue vows and sacrifices spiritual laws of wealth and prosperity vows and sacrifices Psalm 50 verse 5. Psalm 50 verse 5. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 50 verse 5. Everybody read. It's projected. One to read. Those that have made a covenant with me. How? By sacrifice. Vows and sacrifices are powerful, powerful kingdom keys of activating the spiritual laws of giving. What is a vow? A vow is a commitment in the house of God. That's just a, a simple word for it. A commitment. You commit yourself under God that you are going to give something for the house of God. It's still part of kingdom investments, just an extension of it. A vow. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to tell you the difference between a vow and a sacrifice. They are not the same. They are similar, but a vow, paying or remitting a vow may require sacrifice, but not every sacrifice is a vow. So I'm going to explain that. A vow is a commitment. A commitment to invest your resources in the advancement of God's kingdom. Specific, um, a specific amount. It could be anything. Not necessarily money. You can vow to God. There are people who pray and they tell God, 
Uh, let me give you an example of a vow. Remember the story of Anna. Hallelujah. Remember that story? Anna wanted a child and she made a vow. It was a commitment. It was a pact. You can call it a covenant. And she said, Lord, give me a son and I will give you a priest. Are you getting my point? So a vow is a commitment between you and God that you are going to do certain things in the house of God or to a servant of God or contribute in specific ways to advance the kingdom of God and the house of God. Do vows exist today? Absolutely. Absolutely. A vow can be a corporate agreement. A corporate agreement or just an individual desire or instruction from the Holy Spirit. What do I mean by a corporate agreement? We can all agree. There are churches, there are ministries that all agree. Maybe all the workers make this commitment. Um, one way to look at it is like, um, I don't want to use that word, dues. You know what dues are? Okay, look at dues from a spiritual perspective. That's a vow, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a bond upon yourself. You're going to say, Lord, this is what I am going to do in your house. And the Bible says every time you make that commitment, something happens between you and God. Now, um, I don't want to talk much. It's very clear, very straight to the point. But it is very important that when you make a vow, you are not coerced. This is, this is really the central point. Because I know that there are many people, there are ministries for instance, that say um, we need 20 or 50 people to make a pledge of 1, 1 million naira. And some people just get very emotional because the message was so hot and then they come out. And everything in the kingdom is by faith. But it is important to make sure that you come out and make commitments that are realistic and redeemable. Are you getting my point now? There are churches that chase people up and down saying, what of the vow? You said you were going to give us the car. The man said, I changed my mind though. You know, I know that um, there are many in, in almost, I think most ministries some at the end of the year at the beginning of the year at some point in the ministry they challenge the people to make very strong prophetic commitments whether with their resources with their homes you know all of that all of that is called a vow the danger of not fulfilling a vow is that you can bring judgment on yourself is that serious is that very serious there are lots of people that see the pastor and say, Pastor, they just got emotional. They say, in one week time, a viboot is coming. I'm giving it to you. And then eventually, it doesn't come. I remember there was a case like that years ago. Uh, and, and if you're a man of God here, be very careful. Don't coerce people into making foolish vows. One man of God forced a phone, very beautiful phone, out of a lady's hands, her, her boyfriend also bought the phone for her. It was not even up to one week. The man of God just saw the phone and he liked it. And um, when she told the boyfriend, she said, well, when I say boyfriend, I don't mean you understand what I'm saying, right? Maybe let me use a very nice word. Please, what should I use? Fiance. Okay. That word, boyfriend sounds like a joker right so let's use a name that gives the guy very serious now when she told him the guy now when she told him that she gave the phone he said he will come and arrest the pastor if he doesn't give the lady back the phone you know and all kinds of things happened and um, eventually the pastor said the lady should bring the seed equivalent of the phone you know Look, save yourself unnecessary embarrassment. Teach people the right thing and give them an opportunity to respond. Hallelujah. Never put pressure on people. Yes, it's true that ministries need financial resources. That's why we're teaching what we're teaching. Because a blessed congregation, a blessed people will produce a blessed assembly. Is that true? Hallelujah. 
So be careful when you make vows. Don't be emotional about it. But that does not mean you should not apply the law of faith. Hallelujah. There are times you can make commitments and challenge yourself and um, redeem your vows. Sacrifices. Similar to vows, but um, it's just your commitment in the house of God. Really, every kind of giving is this kind of giving, this sacrifice I'm talking about is the one that will cost you something very serious. This is not just your normal giving. Um, 1 Kings verse 3. 1 Kings 3 verse 3. Let's see something that Solomon did. I want to show you an example of a sacrifice. This is a commitment that challenges your faith. I'll talk more on it when I teach on the law of seed faith or the principle of seed faith. A kingdom sacrifice is not just um, your giving. In sacrifice, convenience is out of the way. That's why most sacrifices, um, biblically now, right? A sacrifice is usually a product of either an instruction from the Holy Spirit or a deep revelation from the word. Hallelujah. Something must compel you to do something unusual. I'll talk more about that. And Solomon loved the Lord. So that was the revelation behind his giving. Are you getting my point now? He didn't just give because he was a king. Walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed burnt offerings in high places. Verse but what now? All right, continue. Verse 4. Or let's go to verse 5 very quickly. Did I say 5? 4. 4. So that we see what he did. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was a great high place. How many offerings did he sacrifice? A thousand burnt offerings now imagine just replace all the human beings here and just imagine they are animals right imagine the pool of blood that was flowing all around that was a sacrifice one thousand one thousand what a waste right that's an example of a sacrifice the woman who came and broke her alabaster box at the feet of jesus the bible says it was worth a whole year's wage costly nerd these were spices that were very very um they were what we we'll call colognes in our day today very expensive cologne and the bible didn't say she just put a hole and poured small and left the rest the bible says she broke everything including the jar hallelujah if it does not cost you something serious it's not sacrifice it can be given it can be this Solomon said, I will not give God what will not cost me something. There are many of us we've never made a sacrifice for the kingdom in our life. And it's not just about giving. It's a culture. I'm not just talking of seeds. The sacrifice of your time. The sacrifice of your resources. Hallelujah. It says, gather my saints unto me. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice that means every time you do something that costs you in the house of god it's like entering a covenant with god and god is committed to keeping his own part hallelujah a sacrifice is no ordinary giving is giving plus giving that costs you something hallelujah that's why it is born out of a revelation the offering you give you give most of us give out of our convenience hallelujah but when you bring something that costs you i mean something that you know that a part of you goes with it that's a sacrifice and you don't just do it because you are coerced i told you that two things govern sacrifice one a deep revelation from god's word and the other an instruction I can be teaching like this and the Holy Spirit can give you an instruction. I remember a lady one time, um, we always give people an opportunity to sow and give and all of that, but I'm not the kind of man of God that will tell you, sow your shoe, remove your weave drop it in the offering basket, remove your this and that. 
um, we consider that not to be necessary. But I remember one time one lady just dropped a very expensive phone. And I was so touched. I said, Lord, I don't want trouble. And we looked for the lady and we told her, please, I want to pray for you and give you back your phone. And she said, no, the Lord instructed me. You see that? For many of you, when the whole thing would have gone down, you'd have said, truly, oh, thank you, sir. You're a very good man of God. Hallelujah. Vows exist. Sacrifices exist. And it is very, very powerful. Let's leave it there. I'll talk about the law of seed faith. I want to, I don't want to talk about it now. If I'm to expantiate, I will have to enter the law of seed faith. But I want us to round up with it tonight. The natural laws of wealth and prosperity. Please listen carefully. We've discussed the spiritual laws. As you look at these things, I want you to see the areas where you have not been practicing it. Right? Both the spiritual laws, mindsets, paradigms that need to shift and make sure you make quality adjustments. Natural laws of wealth and prosperity. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk about the concept of money. Please write the concept of money. What is money? Really? We're talking about financial prosperity now. What is money? I'm tempted to ask the treasurer to bring some money for me. But... um. If you can't listen tonight, just endure it. You're not going to see any money. Some of you like money too much. Too much. Just seeing it, even if you don't touch it, just makes you happy. You don't know what to do with yourself. The concept of money. All right, all right, please, let's get to work. What is money? Money is not the paper you hold. Please, treasurer, help me. Let's just do it. Please give me money, treasurer. Treasurer, oh, anything for the boys? Proverbs 18, verse 16. Let's read. One, two, read. One more time. All right, replace a man with your name. Ready? One to read. Aha, I know how to get you people to participate. Ah! Some of you are calling all the names so that no part of the name will be missing. It. One more time. May that be your testimony in the Ah! Okay. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. This is the finance department. I have no business with. Love not the world. Not the things that are in this world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not. Hallelujah. People have died for this. Right? This thing is running away from others and is running towards others. Tonight, what you will learn will make it come your direction. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Right? The concept of money. Now, look at me. Do you know that 100, is it 100 million or 100 billion of Zimbabwe money just buys one egg? Yeah, all of this in Zimbabwe if it's a Zimbabwe currency I don't know how far their inflation has gone but it can buy just one egg or a cup of tea so you can be a broke billionaire are you getting my point I want to read the 
define your mindset let's understand we're looking at the natural laws because for many of us this is what we believe to be money right this is what we have been taught to be money because when you walk this is what they give you is that true they give you this and then you can use this to buy this and that in the market now but um i want us to look back at a few hundred years ago when there was no paper hallelujah what was their money huh what are saying cowries what do you mean cowries let me teach you keep quiet praise god now please listen if we do not understand the biblical concept of money you will be misled are you getting my point please please you need to get this i want everybody here to be rich and prosperous and no devil will stop you in jesus name so listen carefully now when the world was in what we call an agrarian age agriculture predominantly are you getting my point now they used what we call the batter system have you heard about that or you were sleeping when they were teaching you in primary school trade by batter where i carry my goat right and then you bring your bag of maize and i give you a goat and you give me so will you call that bag of maize money or will you call that goat money are you getting my point let's trace it and see where we are coming from so you bring a goat and then i bring a bag of rice or something and then we exchange that was how um people carried out all kinds of transactions but eventually a few things happened because number one it was not easily divisible you see that you don't need to write it this is um what's now economics you know that you have an idea some of you don't know if you don't know right don't just say i know if you don't know write it humble yourself and just say i'm just hearing it for the first time right hallelujah number two was portability if you had oil for instance will you carry one drum of oil on your head and be walking around looking for who has something number three i may have something you want but you may not have what i need in exchange for it are you getting my point so all these factors began to create a need um to find something that will fit the definition of what we know today to be money from there people went into cowries and gold i'm just fast forwarding very quickly gold and silver and all of that they tried to make um coins gold coins shekels of silver you see them in the bible so they sold joseph they gave joseph and then they gave the people how many shekels 30 shekels and all of that same thing judas did for jesus christ hallelujah now eventually they brought the concept of what we call paper the paper currency or paper notes um please listen let me bless you right now the original revelation behind i want to carry new ones the original revelation behind this was supposed to be a receipt for the money you have are you getting my point what today you call money was originally devised so that it becomes a receipt come sam let me explain that to you um ah can't use a human being now i turned and i saw a very pretty lady i said no way i wanted to use her as a commodity but back to sender give me this guitar can you remove it and just give it to me you must understand in jesus name right hold this now imagine sam walking around with this guitar are you getting my point now he is going everywhere with it are you getting my point now this 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 is not portable are you getting my point now in uh, explanation now and he cannot be carrying this to go around with you so we devised a way of measuring what the worth of this guitar is right so let's assume is how much um we give it a value based on a reference 
and let's call it 4,000. So I now say, Sam, drop this guitar. Drop the guitar now. I want to show you how flawed the economy of the world is. And hold this. This is 4,000. So this becomes an evidence that you have real guitar lying down somewhere. Are you getting me now? This paper that you're holding is a receipt for something real. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means every time you hold this, it is a sign that there is something real that you have. More true and more real. Are you getting my point? Better don't apply for economics. Some of you are looking at me. If you've not applied for, for jam, don't try it at all. Praise God. This is basic economics. Now, the world system had a universal backing called gold. Everybody say gold. Are you getting my point now? So gold was the reference, right? So every time they gave you 4,000, or how much is this? 5,000. What they are trying to say is that this is a receipt for having real gold worth 5,000. Are you getting my point? Now, gradually, the Illuminati and the rest and so on and so forth just divorced this from gold. So that you are now holding this, but it is not backing, it's not being backed up by anything. Let me give you a proof. Set fire on this now. How will you claim it back? Are you getting my point now? Set fire. Just we won't do it. Ah, God will punish us. We won't do it. But set fire on this right now. Do you know if you set fire now, who will you take to court? Are you getting my point now? So, there can be one billion of this and if fire catches it, it, has, it doesn't have any value. There is nothing that is backing it. Are you getting my point now? So, if your concept of prosperity is having this, then you are not rich. Some of you are saying, I don't agree. Let me shall have this one. I know some of you, you are saying all these things you are talking in story. so let me have this one first. This is what people want. Listen, I want to explain to you why someone was called a rich fool in the Bible. Do you know why they call him a rich fool? He was not called a fool because he was rich. I will tell you why. Praise the Lord. Bless you, Sam. So what then is money? Right, please. Money is simply a means or a way to exchange or reward value. Money is a reward for value. And then you can add or perceived value. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Money is simply a reward or what you get in exchange for value. And there's a reason why I said perceived value. If I'm a false prophet, for instance, let me show you what perceived value is. If I'm a false prophet and I come and I say, Annie, you are going to be blessed. Package 10,000. You have now rewarded me for honoring what you call perceived value. This is not real value. Are you getting my point now? I will show you why many men of God are rich. They don't even know why they are rich. They think they are just rich because they are tithing alone. No. No one gets rich for doing nothing. Only arm robbers. You see why arm robbery is bad? When we when I explain to you the concept of value, you will see that if you are getting money for doing nothing, you are a thief. Praise God. Please write. Did I define money? What did I say it is? Okay, let's give the two definitions. Many of you have mixed all kinds of things. Let's just give it two definitions. Number one, money is a means of exchange of value. A means of exchange of value. Number two, money is a reward for adding value. We're going to be dwelling around this one word. 
that has changed the life of millions and may it change someone's life tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I think I did a little teaching on that when I was talking to the final year people write this word down value V-A-L-U-E when medical students come into the medical school oftentimes they take them to see a cadaver I don't know if they still do it and they ask them to salute the cadaver because their knowledge about medicine will be dependent on the sacrifice of that cadaver write this word down value because the blessings that will come upon your life will be dependent on that one word please don't joke with it blessed be the name of the Lord have you written it value value simply means your ability to solve problems and provide solutions please listen to me these are irrefutable keys these are irrefutable keys if you catch what I'm telling you it's only a matter of time what is value the ability to solve problems and provide or prefer solutions value also means your worth a sum total of your worth we we'll play around these two definitions I'm so happy seeing everybody writing this is a school you must write it's not just about shouting this is a very serious school so you write and learn understand what it is that's why I gave us the course curriculum before we started thank you Jesus so value talks about your ability to what solve problems are you getting me now when dealing with the natural laws of prosperity everything about our discussion will hinge on this word value what it is that you can provide what it is that you have that God has given you are you getting my point now that you can give humanity and you can receive rewards for this these are irrefutable keys of prosperity many people in church teach on tithing and giving we touched on that right but for many prosperity teachings they just stop there and say everybody rise up and package a seed but the truth is that if that is all that is taught the body of Christ that theology will only make pastors rich are you getting me now value everybody say value what I can give that will be paid for what I can offer that will bring rewards for me forget about total prosperity if you claim you do not have something to offer let me tell you something every time God wants to bless you after practicing this kingdom laws he will always place a demand on something you have everybody say I have something say it I have something in 2nd Kings 4 when they came and met the woman remember the story of the woman the wife of the prophet who died and they were about taking the children when she ran to the prophet and said help me what did he tell her he said what do you have great men are men who have something they know what they have and they've mastered the art of packaging their value hallelujah are you getting blessed when Peter and John came to the man at gate beautiful the Bible says they told him look on us and the man looking expecting to receive something that means he expected that they had something to give is that true and they said silver and gold we do not have I think it was the workers or final yes uh, people now or heads of department that I was teaching them that in this life there is what you have and there is what you do not have is that true when you find what you have you develop and deploy it when you find what you do not have you learn how to receive it and there are two ways to receive number one is by what knowledge and impartation these are the two ways of receiving things in the kingdom through knowledge and through impartation 
Is someone following me, please? Hallelujah. Value. He said, silver and gold have I known. That means I acknowledge that there are some things I do not have. He said, but such as I have, you can only give such as you have. At what point in his life did he know that he had that? Are you following me now? Elisha told um, the king, he said, let Gehazi come to me. Let Gehazi come to me that he will know that there is what? A prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. Are you following me, please? Say value. Say it again, value. Now, let's read Proverbs 18, verse 16. Proverbs 18, verse 16. Just leave her quietly. I hope she's okay. Did she faint on? Oh, she's under the anointing. She fainted. Okay, carry her. Welfare department. What made her faint? She's sick. Mm, that's why we've been teaching. Please, people know what to do. Let's let's concentrate. We pray for her and it doesn't work. Take her to the hospital. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Proverbs 18. Now, everywhere you see gift, replace it by the word value. Are you ready to read now? Want to read? A man's value does what? A man's value. That means when you have something to offer, when you have the ability to solve problems and profess solutions, the Bible says it can make room. It didn't say it to show you where the room is. It can make room and do what? Bring you before great men. Natural laws of prosperity. You must understand that those who are blessed financially in this kingdom, listen to me. Those who are blessed financially in this kingdom are men and women who have something to offer. Everybody say, I have something to offer. Now, when we talk of value, whether it is spiritual value, whatever it is, let me tell you why men of God are rich and they do not even know. As I'm talking to you right now, I'm offering value to you. Is that true? I am solving a problem. I'm preferring solutions. I'm offering spiritual value. Now, it is a law in the kingdom. Every time you add value, whether you sell it or give it for free, you must be rewarded. That's how the law works. I've given somebody a big revelation. Every time value is released, whether you give it for free or you sell it, you are compelled to receive a reward. Whether you give it for free or you sell it, you're not paying me for what I'm giving, but I am conscious that there is a law. That's why I give my best. Are you getting my point now? Because according to God's law, according to the law that he has put, that is natural does not mean it does not come from God. It's consistent with kingdom principles. Are you getting my point now? Every single time you add value, reward comes to you. Question. That means the reason why you have not been rewarded is because you have not recognized or developed your value enough for somebody to pay for it. Is that true? Hallelujah. Are you understanding the concept of value? The ability to solve problems. Many people want something for nothing. Nigerians like something for nothing. We want dash. We want a wolf. We want all kinds of free things. But let me tell you something. In the school of prosperity, there must be something that you can give in exchange for money. Hallelujah. So the question I have for everyone listening to me is what do you have in your house? 
it could be a gift it could be an anointing it could be a skill from your training or it could be a talent there are four things that connote value either what you are anointed you are gifted you are skilled or you are trained for do you know that there is an anointing upon your life that you can add value to the world this is why it is not right for believers to remain poor if you understand the concept of value you have something that a rich man needs are you getting my point now you have something that a poor man needs because of that value you have when it is packaged and deployed properly it will bring you rewards finance hallelujah do you know for instance if i package my teachings now and turn it into a book is that value is that value i mean all that i've been teaching if i package at least i know among all of them even if it's just one it will be a bestseller is that true now what happens it be, because i have now i'm adding value i'm supplying spiritual information to mankind in certain aspects of life they will be compelled to pay for it is someone understanding you can have a room that is empty no man comes there the day you start adding value in that room people start coming listen please listen i want to tell you something very powerful and i pray it will change your life you do not look for money money is attracted get this never forget it there are people who have you had that statement i'm looking for money stop looking it doesn't work that way you don't look for money money is attracted by obeying certain definite laws hallelujah our parents have had this mindset oh i'm looking for money let me look for money where is it hallelujah you don't just look for money there are things you do that bring financial resources to you are you understanding what i'm teaching stop trying to look for money because sincerely speaking it is not missing it is only waiting for something that it can come in exchange for welfare do you still sell zobo huh you, they've not started how many of you know that because they are not offering any value to you now you will carry your your 10 naira or 100 naira and go home with it but the moment they put yogurt there or zobo what happens they have now packaged value after praying and shouting you are thirsty correct and you are compelled to bring this out and you will give them and they will give you something in exchange stop trying to look for free money it doesn't exist there is always something you have and the degree of value you offer is the degree to which financial resources come to you please i want you to understand this i'm teaching you the fundamental principle a very powerful natural law that commands prosperity hallelujah everybody say i have something very quickly let's do a workshop for two minutes write a list of things you know you have that if you train god can use it to honor you write it quickly please everybody leadership skills write it an extremely pretty face queen esther write it oratory write it i don't just mean noise making and ability to talk anyhow oratory write it please write it you think god has given you an anointing there's nothing to feel you are not being arrogant this is a workshop everybody participate write it there are things i know i have if i say i don't have them it's a lie i don't have everything but kai there are some things i have there are some things you have write it for the first time be sincere with yourself and say i'm fine what is there let me just say it write it and say i'm brilliant i have leadership skills write it 
please look at what you are writing. Don't just, we are very serious. Don't just write something that you can't show somebody else. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. There is something you have. Hallelujah. This ability to teach is value that I can add. Is that true? I go for ministrations and I don't sell the anointing. No, I don't do that. But every time I go for ministrations, what happened? For standing to teach the people of God and bless them, they package what they call honorarium and then there are people who are individually blessed in the meeting and they come with envelopes and say sir we want to bless you we want to honor you what that means is the more you develop yourself you are attracting wealth to yourself that means you prayer is capital the holy ghost is capital when you become anointed if you lay hands on a sick body and is healed you are not selling the anointing but trust me if it is notable enough men will come and pay you for it you have a prophetic dimension i mean look at all all kinds of prophets whether fake or real is a business that is selling anyhow in nigeria now i know that there are there are genuine servants called of god hallelujah do you think if a man comes to prophesy in your life and tells you the truth and it happens and you are blessed no matter how greedy you are you will be too grateful not to forget the person you will come and say sir or papa or daddy or whatever this is this is a blessing from god brothers and sisters the secret to conquering inferiority is to have something the world cannot reject you for they may criticize you but there is this treasure in earthen vessels i can never be intimidated in my life never i can be challenged but to be intimidated is to mock god he has tried for me everybody say i have something say one more time i have something yes there are some of you that have an anointing the anointing god has given you if you respect it and you honor it it can bring bread to your table but many of us are playing around and doing all kinds of things you do not know that everything God gives you is value and you can give that value I told you it's a law see listen if you understand this and you are a worker in church you will not just work to be paid because whether you are paid or not it is a law you can't change it every time value is offered what happens finance Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you know that if a woman comes here and she's selling pure water right now, will she make money? Everybody answer me, will she make money? But if she doesn't sell, will she be sitting at her house and money will come? Value. 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 Every time you master the art and the ability of adding value, you increase. There is something you have everybody say i have something say it i have something some of you what you have is uncommon leadership abilities uncommon leadership abilities you have uncommon leadership abilities beyond imagination you are extraordinary leaders but you cannot develop yourself because you think it cannot bless you we are still talking about the concept of value. The Bible says, Proverbs 18 verse 16, the gift. I told you to replace that word with what? Value. The value of any man can make room. I'm telling you, those can be shortened over others. How many of you have seen people who, maybe those with sirens, and they tell you there's no place to pass. But the moment they are coming, they tell you people who are begging, you know, shift. And then they open the place and say, Sean, sir. And he just passes and they say, like we're saying, there's no space. You just saw that there was space. It's just that you have not become notable enough. 
the day you become notable, that door will open. Is someone getting what I'm saying? The African culture has cheated us by making us believe that we do not have anything. Say, I have something. There is something you have that the world can celebrate you for. I'm telling you, there is something you have. I walk with this consciousness. There is an anointing that I have. If you don't have anything, you have experience. And you can package that experience in a book. And people will come to glean from your wisdom. If you don't have success, you have enough failures to advise people. You have something at every time. Yeah. I'm teaching you right now. I'm adding spiritual values. Are you seeing why men of God are rich? They are not just rich because they were called of God. Are you getting my point? Many men of God do not understand the full dynamics of why they are prosperous. So they design a prosperity message such that for you to be prosperous, you must become a man of God. Question. If God has not called you into the fivefold ministry, how do you become rich? Are you, are you following me now? Say in the name of Jesus. I reject poverty. Say it in the name of Jesus. I reject poverty. I reject lack. There is something I have. That the world will pay for. There is something I have. That can open doors for me. Say it one more time. In the name of Jesus. I refuse to feel inferior. In the name of Jesus. I refuse to feel like a nobody. There is an ability in me. There is wisdom in me that I can exchange for financial resources. When you understand this, when you understand this, you will know that if you remain poor in this life, it's not God's fault. Are you getting my point now? There is something that you have. Oh, hallelujah, I have something. Can we pray just in one minute while you're seated? I want you to just bless the Lord and say, I have something. No devil will deceive me. I have something. It may not show now. You may be an abject failure right now from the perspective of men. But I tell you, there's this treasure. There is an anointing on your life that can compel nations to bow opportunity has not been given yet but it does not mean it's there that prophetic gift can feed nations and reward you that entrepreneurial spirit can bless you your beauty can bring food on your table without compromising kingdom values there is something you have your course the course that you are reading or you've read can bring food on your table is value everything that constitutes an advantage please pray one minute there is something i have jesus it may not speak today but it will speak it may not speak today but it will speak nations may not see it today men may mock you as you are developing it but it has capacity to make you a, a city that is on a hill that cannot be hidden gender notwithstanding your background notwithstanding your limitations notwithstanding hallelujah say I have something stop thinking you are the helpless ones waiting for people to help you is what we got from colonialism. Are you getting my point now? That's the mindset. Listen. Read Matthew Ashimo Law's book, Black and Blessed. He led a powerful revolution that almost cost him um, trouble in Europe. He let people know that it's not a cause to be black. The color of your skin has nothing to do with your destiny. Are you getting my point now? They brought the spirit of servitude to Africa and they made people look like if you are not a white man, you are destined to be a slave. Your job is to serve. And this is the same mindset, let me tell you the truth, that is in our educational system. From 100 level, you're already thinking, who will give me a job? Oh, I'm reading 
this and that. I'm reading this course. It's not marketable. Some of our parents have put pressure on us. You must read medicine. Whether you like it or not, it is lucrative. Now, don't blame them. They are only doing the best with the revelation they have. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The gift of a man can make room for him. Are you getting my point now? The gift of a man. I was watching one of Benny Hinn's videos and he was going to a crusade and the president of the nation together with the entourage, they were waiting for him at the airport. As soon as he landed, these presidents and these people are not born again. No. They are not born again. But there is value that is going to add to that nation. Hallelujah. You will add value in this Nigeria. They will change your passport to a diplomatic passport. No more begging for visa. It becomes a privilege to move around. Yes. Hallelujah. There is something that can make anybody Christian, Muslim, atheist, they can't deny your presence. There is something that would be, there are men of God, there are all classes of men of God. Fine, ugly, it does not make any difference as far as the needs of men are, are available. Is that true? No matter how ugly I look, if you need healing, you will look at my face again. You will look at something I have. And you must honor me. I will come and sit down. Because you won't keep me at the back. There is something I carry. Everybody say, there is something I carry. Oh yes, there is something you carry. There is something you carry that you can give in exchange. The devil has perverted it. But after tithing, giving, there are some of our mothers here. You may be looking at yourself and you are, you are thinking you are old. You are not old enough to release your... I mean, you are not beyond the age to release your value and be blessed. I'm going to be teaching us all these things. But I want to press on this issue of value. Every time you go somewhere, I'd like you to see what they do not have that you have. That becomes your entrance into that place. Are you getting my point now? There are places I go to, nobody knows me, I just sit down quietly. Five, ten minutes, someone is looking at me. Are you not Joshua Selman, the gift of a man? And while they are riding, I say, Lord, it's not my fault. I, it's not my fault. When you called me, I said yes. Value. There are some of you, God has given you unusual ability. You can write. Your works are speaking. One lecturer just looked at you and told you all kinds of nonsense and said I'm the best student in this faculty and nobody will come let me tell you anybody that thinks you will not become anything you will shock them in this life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ yes you cannot speak English well but there is something you can do that does not need English in China they refuse to learn English on purpose because they believe they will take charge of the world and everybody must learn Chinese whether he likes it or not. Right now you turn your deep freezer upside down and you are punishing yourself trying to read what they wrote because they are offering something you must buy. Everybody say value. You can choose it. Produce something and write it in your language. Write it in tongues. Write it whatever and force the world to read it. Hallelujah. Mention everyone who is truly wealthy and I can tell you the value they are adding to the world. Mention one arm robber and there is no value they are adding. Huh? When you talk of Bill Gates, he has changed the world because of what he's offering. Zuckerberg, mention all of them. Don't dream of just becoming rich by putting little dots of oil and draw a cross on your head. This is, let me tell you, it can bring favor but you will lack the resources to maintain and multiply it at that level everybody say there's something I have don't think business I'm not talking of business I'm talking of something we've not spoken about all those things I'm talking of something that you have hallelujah this lady fainted now this is not I don't know if she fainted or fell under the anointing whatever happened it has listen until there is a problem you are unnecessary says dr mike mudok 
until there is a problem one of my greatest mentors on wisdom that guy is a bank of wisdom one minute with him he tears you into pieces with the wisdom he has mastered the art of wisdom hallelujah until there is a problem you are what unnecessary as simple as that if you don't need revelation joshua selman is unnecessary except if i have something else to offer to you if you if you want to sing if you want good music come sam if you want good music you are not going to invite me nobody it is i can't remember the last time anybody invited me to their church to come and sing have i not been singing answer me have i not been singing why why is it that where you are you put it there word minister don't confuse us we are bringing you because of that aspect is that true I was a music director. I've said it many times. Has he made you invite me to come and teach the choir? Because I have not developed myself enough. Hallelujah. This is what is bringing bread for somebody. Play something, Mike. Increase the volume and just play anything. Change the voice and play something that will glorify Jesus Christ. Really, listen, listen. I want to show you the excellency of value. You remain inferior and you keep criticizing people and dying in silence until something in you brings you out of that realm. Look at people who are always criticizing. They, they have not discovered something that they have to give. So every time they look at somebody, what are they trying to show us? Rise and become colleagues in that realm where there are very few people. Leave those struggling down and rise up. Play mic. Anything. Everybody say value. value. This can be side one. As simple as that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Powerful moments of worship. You think it won't sell? Answer me. If you wake up with this and this is charging your spirit. This is, hold on. Many people say he's just ministering. The tape they are going to package, is it free? value value sam you will sing i always like doing this work. for time's sake we'll just have one sing any song you like anything at all and you will know the difference between him and me you will know that it's not as if god is unjust are you getting my point i will lift my voice and I will sing, I will sing holy, I will sing holy to my Lord and Savior, my God and King, I will sing holy. I will sing holy. I will raise the voice. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was near. Hallelujah, I will sing before the strong forever. Hallelujah, listen. That takes us to the next principle we're talking about. Everybody write competence. Write it down, competence. I will show you why some people will die broke. Doesn't matter how 
much they are whether they pray for 100 years their spirits will be electrified but as far as finance is concerned mm -mm. trust me hallelujah everybody write competence I want to make you hate average right now and I pray for the grace to do it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ look up everybody I sing right why will you prefer Sam to me is it that I cannot sing the song leave the boy he's listening to this financial oh okay he's following his mother are you following me now everybody why since I sing and Sam sings too what is the difference between two of us please be honest not just value we all have value what's the difference the degree to which we have developed that value is that true is that true look at me tonight i want you to be very sincere for the first time for some of you stop lying to yourself the bible says don't esteem yourself more than is meat there are many of you claiming you are competent over some things you are not competent about and you are wondering why are doors not opening for me because you have not pressed enough there is a level of extraordinary competence you enter it's a realm of rest there is no competition there hallelujah if i'm to sing with sam right now i will just leverage on the anointing of the holy spirit on my life i'll just say lord forget about the boys praise the lord Say I refuse poverty. Competence. Look up. Do you know that competence attracts all kinds of people and resources to your life? What is competence? Leadership. Excellence. The ability to surpass ordinary standards. Extremely accurate. Mastery. There's a song they call music of the masters men who have mastered the art of not making mistakes they have demonstrated in this realm that it is possible so when you watch them play they are not trying to look for where kiji and you know they are just laughing and enjoying the groove listen brothers and sisters when you imbibe the law of competence in everything you do whether I'm not, you, you notice now, I've not mentioned any word business. Whether in ministry, there are ministers who, they love God, but they don't study scripture. They don't know that, they tell you Genesis 1 verse 1 and, and quote nonsense. And they won't go back to listen to themselves and correct themselves. See, let me tell you something. There is one man that challenges me, Bishop Oyedeko. He doesn't just quote the regular verses. He will fish out one verse. He will say something that may not make sense and pull out a scripture and then say it. It was from him that I learned that it is good for a, a man to do what? Remember that scripture? What is it again? To bear his yoke in his youth. Competence. You want to be a man of God. Let me tell you, if all you think makes ministry is falling under the anointing, you will throw people down till the day there's nobody again in your parish or in your church. Let me tell you, listen, listen. You must build yourself. There are aspects of your life that you must be diligent. I'm not talking of everything. What is that one thing that you know that I'm good in this one? God is my witness whom I serve with my conscience. He can take me anywhere. Many of you are average, average in many things. You say I'm, I'm multi-talented. None of them has brought food on your table. You are multi-talented over little average things. Why don't you strive for competence? The Bible says, if a man desires mastery, he is not crowned until he strives lawfully. There are aspects of my life I've told myself and I've made a covenant with myself and vowed before God that I will be so competent. God is speaking to someone right now. Hallelujah. 
is is true that you have something but that something is not enough to take you anywhere and everywhere you go the door closes behind you stop begging it's a sign to go back build yourself and just stand you are a city on a hill the bible says you cannot be hidden there are ministers carrying complimentary cards all around i'm i'm a prophet if you invite me i promise you you will see the hand of god in your ministry my brother if you find yourself marketing yourself it's a sign you are not prepared proverbs 31 31 and let her works speak for her at the gates you don't speak for your works hallelujah there are people with all kinds of complimentary cards they have offices with ac they have two or three screens there's no value there's no competence they can't do anything and this is the deceit you find around everybody just comes and says okay i am this i am that very fine table nice jeep packed outside there is nothing to offer i'm challenging you right now if you believe god is going to use your degree and you believe that your degree is one of the tools you will use what is wrong with stretching it to the extra mile go for your masters get a masters and be confident so that they stop shutting the door at you hallelujah let me tell you something it's, it's my natural disposition i dislike lazy people if you are around me it's impossible to be lazy i'll just send you away people sleeping for hours without any work to account for why they are sleeping for that long hallelujah let me i'm challenging you many youths in nigeria are lazy they are just hustlers so it looks like they are hard working hustling is not the same as smart work hustling is just to be hitting left right and center anywhere i know one door will open no you don't make it that way there is something you have for somebody somebody can say this is the rod of god in my hands and you're going to say lord i will carry this rod that's what people like frank edwards did is that true they took this keyboard and the voice that god gave them and they said lord i'm taking it and right now look at comedians in nigeria 2.5 million these guys go these guys go to london and collect 30 pounds per seat nigerians just to make you laugh and now you may think that they don't know what they are doing they are not clowns try to make people laugh and see if it's easy for people to laugh do you know how frustrated you become when you give series of jokes and the people are looking at you So don't think you know it's easy to look at them and feel these guys are just lousy boys either because of their hair or this you don't know what books they've read and and the way this is and i'm i'm going to say this if you are a gospel artist here stand up gospel artist if you are not sure just quietly remain seated I'm, i don't intend to embarrass you but honestly be confident if you know you are a gospel artist a worshiper okay whatever stand up i'm serious i'm serious whether inside or outside please stand up let me challenge you this night because you must prosper you can hate me now but you thank me tomorrow now how many of you can show me three people three people whose works mentor you and build you according to the area you see god taking you let me see your hands don't lie don't lie correct are you seeing now this is a measure of your desire for competence there is no reason why we should invite somebody from koinonia here who would do what we're already doing there is no reason hallelujah i'm challenging you your voice your gift can make room for you you don't need to market yourself you need no nonsense complimentary card what you need is gift with proof that can deliver oedeko said the end of every argument is proof mukhtar is the person who who dry cleans my 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 suits and my i've not i've not had the desire even while he was serving 
he comes to do it because he has done it so well when people like you they will give all kinds of excuses about you no matter what people say about you it's only a matter of time it will pass and they will focus on what they have to get from you hallelujah how many of you rehearse worshipers i'm challenging you how many of you get up in the morning some of you are music directors in your churches you know that what you are producing in that church is nothing to write home about but there's nothing to challenge you see if you live around local champions who clap for you even when you are wrong you will be broke in life there are some of us that come you sing nonsense and somebody comes to tell you wow jesus and you are saying really tell yourself the truth i can get there but i'm not there yet don't see sam and say we are colleagues you are not colleagues make yourself a protege this equality nonsense is killing the body of christ we are equal in christ we are not equal in value are you getting me now so challenge yourself this is what i tell the worship team all the time hallelujah this is what I, I challenge the leaders if there is nobody there are some of us we hate challenges we want everybody telling you it's all right in the school of prosperity it does not work like that the bible says provoke one another unto godliness i'm challenging you some of you have beautiful voices potentially you are sitting here and then there are some of you you're already looking for exposure you only rest on the seventh day if you are trying to rest now you are deceiving yourself at my level right now if i try to rest and i say i've gotten it in ministry is the height of self-deception i can't say god has not tried for me but there are heights there are people who have gone ahead of us and they have shown us possibilities that exist in christ and we must press I don't hang around psychophants. I hate liars. I'm not saying don't be around people who bless you and encourage you. But I am teaching you there is a way you can tame poverty. Competence. Everybody say competence. Please sit down. God bless you. Those of you who believe God is calling you to be entrepreneurs. I don't just mean you like business. You really believe there is an aspect of your life like that. Stand up. Let's see them. I assume that you are standing up intentionally without any kind of coercion. You know what you are doing. Let me challenge. I really want to challenge you tonight because I love you. Listen. If you cannot show me two to three people at least whose books, whose lives, whose videos are mentoring you and building you i'm telling you straight to the point you are not following the right path are you getting my point now who is challenging you who is challenging you you want to become a public speaker you can't speak well it has not been a source of concern you are saying it does not matter that's the rod of god on your hand does it take 10 years to learn english can't you go and subscribe for extra moral english see this is the problem many people think if you do not humble yourself you will die of poverty there are times you need to go and learn please don't feel offended i'm not just lashing you out of hatred i love you from the depths of my heart i hope you understand i just want to i want to provoke you to know that there is a way to the top and that that thing does not come by dash we've spoken about the spiritual laws but brothers and sisters you can be so competent you can be the very best people pack auditoriums when people like zig ziglar are going to speak they pray hundreds of thousands of dollars nigeria brought les brown and they paid so much money to hear a man come and speak for two hours what is it about talking hallelujah Please sit down. Show me the project you are currently doing in your life. Show me 
the book where you are currently writing something you are working on and i know that you are already on your way out of poverty i don't care if you are taking gary right now but show me the flamboyancy you are doing fine lady handsome guy and i show you a big deceit that will cost you so much in life there are many people claiming what they are not listen brothers and sisters this is the school of prosperity it's time to settle down the minimum standard in the world today is excellence that's the minimum standard whether spiritually or otherwise that's why we pray by the grace of god we have a robust prayer team and everybody has that spirit of excellence but there are things i do every day and where i don't i cannot do it i always try to catch up and make up my spiritual life i build myself in leadership i build myself in entrepreneurship you must build yourself in these areas challenge yourself tonight i will be competent i receive grace this is your exit out of your present state god is speaking to someone tonight this is your exit out of your present state if you've been suffering complex and inferiority if you're always feeling offended when you see others is because you have not seen the rod of god in your hands there is something you can hold that can part the red sea for you let me tell you something there is something you do not go and stand before the red sea without nothing what do you have that can part that river for you hallelujah the value of a man makes room for him i read a book years ago by john mason called the enemy called average and i challenged myself that i was never going to live an average life please listen to me this could be an understanding that will exit you out of poverty forever i call it intentional prosperity prosperity that you entered intentionally you know what you did that brought you it was not magic when it comes to prosperity it's not just about miracles it's about principles that can be reproduced again and again and again this becomes the basis of your confidence is god changing somebody tonight the place is quiet tonight god is speaking to somebody hallelujah write this word down please In your journey to prosperity there are three major things you will need to develop aside from all of these things number one or three levels of knowledge you must acquire what I call financial intelligence part of what I'm giving you is financial intelligence please write financial intelligence number two you need financial planning intelligence is good but it's not enough financial planning number three you need financial discipline today i'm going to announce a few books i've read a lot of books but there are a few that i truly believe you don't need to read everything but there are a few books that can help you what is financial intelligence The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works. The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works is called financial intelligence. You need financial intelligence. The educational system in Nigeria does not have a structure that provides adequate financial intelligence. For instance, I redefined money for you. I told you a number of things, how that money responds to value. All of these informations culminate in what we call financial intelligence. Hallelujah. Financial intelligence also helps you to develop what we call in business an investor mentality, not a consumer mentality financial intelligence many christians in the body of christ have money but they do not have financial intelligence they don't know how money works there are many churches
the men of God are anointed and God is blessing them but because they lack financial intelligence they do not know what to do I look forward to times when we will not have to talk about this again because everyone will be blessed we can now concentrate on other aspects of the kingdom hallelujah financial pursuit is not supposed to be a lifetime pursuit it's a cause when it becomes a lifetime pursuit what that means is that from your birth to the day you die you live your entire life looking for money you never found some of our parents are 70 years right now some 80 years ask them what they are still doing they tell you they are looking for money my bible tells me except the lord builds a house he says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain the bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning nigerians and sleep late in the night what's the reward only to eat the bread of sorrow the bible says but he gives unto his beloved sleep hallelujah financial intelligence helps you to understand that every time money enters your hand I've, I've explained it part of it is for God part of it is for you and part of it is your is for your future please write it down every money that enters your hand is divided into three one part for God one part for your consumption right now another part for your future if you wear the clothes you should wear tomorrow now you'll be naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow now you would die hungry tomorrow so write it this is financial intelligence understanding all the information that helps money to stay in your hands every time money comes into your hands just know please look up everybody put this as a golden rule in your life from today every major money that comes into your life know that the tithe belongs to the lord and any other kingdom investment part of it belongs for you today your expenditures and then investment for your tomorrow you cannot forget about your tomorrow you cannot walk into a future you are not prepared for some of our parents are crying and dying right now when they were when they were young land you would sell land maybe 250 naira in our today's money their colleagues were buying it there they were eating and drinking beer and and doing all kinds of things going to the market square and causing trouble now they are 50 years 60 years let me tell you something this life i want to teach you a powerful lesson this life is divided into four major phases this is a digression but let me help you understand if you understand this you will wake up right now and you will know that time waits for no one everybody right your life is divided into four phases there is the morning phase of your life there is the afternoon phase of your life there is the evening phase of your life and there is the night phase of your life the first 25 years of your life constitute the morning phase of your life the second 25 years of your life constitutes the afternoon phase of your life god is challenging somebody god is weeping childishness out of somebody with this word the the third 25 years from 51 to what now 75 constitutes the evening phase of your life everything afterwards constitute the night phase please look up and let me explain to you the bible says so teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom listen it is expected by god that at the maximum of 25 years let me challenge you koinonia that at 25 years some things should have happened in your life are you getting my point at 25 you should be born again you should have known the lord you should have been filled with the holy spirit and you would have understood the principles of the kingdom that means if you are after or over 25 you are you have entered the second season of your life already and that means you must catch up listen please god is speaking to somebody there's too much childishness 
in the body of Christ and we must kick it out by letting everyone know that what when you were mentioning future yesterday today was part of that future now that today has come that gentleman that came to give his testimony a bishop was reminding me I remember when he came post UME to imagine that he's rounded up service today I almost cannot believe it but that's the brevity of time many of you can still remember the day you carried your iron box and you were entering your secondary school look at you today don't ever let the devil make you feel there is time have you heard that word some of you may be 16 19 20 30 you're saying there is once you are 25 years old that's the learning phase of your life that's the time of your life you can make mistakes and go scot free are you getting my point after that time some things begin to cost you listen i'm teaching you this thing because some of us never had this opportunity are you getting my point now some of you just got old how old are you 34 35 are you born again no feel the holy spirit no what do you know about life nothing the second phase of your life listen is the phase where you begin to make quality investments for your destiny where you begin to put to use what you have learned in the first 25 years of your life now if you catch up it's an advantage 25 years maximum of 25 once you are at 25 and some god is speaking to you because many of us here are over 25 you're just looking playing around smiling around somebody who is 15 years is playing you are joining to play with the person you are 10 years um behind schedule the lady is sleeping around doing every kind of thing you two are 25 sleeping around believing that i will get husband one day ladies listen let me challenge you this night whether you believe it or not ladies hear me i want to talk to you right now and i want to talk to you from the depths of my heart listen to me a day will come in your life when the men around your age group would have been married are you getting my point that means the earlier you become a virtuous lady and position yourself the better i'm not scaring you i'm only telling you the truth hallelujah at age 40 the probability to hear god to make any marital decision is almost zero is that true there are some of us who just live carelessly honestly i'm preaching from the depths of my heart God is telling somebody, wake up. You have all kinds of rows of boyfriends and people around. One for Monday, one for Tuesday. Continue. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. You are sowing. You will enter the next phase of your life and turn back and say, why is my life like this? And God says, it's in my law. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Hallelujah. Many of you who are a lot younger, you have a big opportunity. Stop saying I'm a child. In Nigeria, what's the age for adulthood? 18 years, right? Many people are more than 18 years. So what makes you think? And there are two words that have made the youth in Nigeria. It has cheated the youth in Nigeria. One is adolescence. Two is young adults. Kick those words out of your life. If you are, if you are an adult, you are an adult. You are sleeping around and calling yourself a child. They say, I, I'm adolescent. What does that mean? So you can play around. Let me tell you, stop dreaming. If you are an adult, an adult is one who is not a child. Simple. Financial dominion. There are sisters playing around with their opportunities, playing around with the youthfulness of their lives. I'm not saying just jump around and say yes to anybody, but what are you doing? You are not positioning yourself. You are there gossiping about people. Just You have 20 toasters. Keep watching. Keep watching as the toasters marry. And you find out at a point that it will be Ichabod, the glory. It's, it's not that God calls you. That's how life works. And brothers, don't think I will not come to you. 
because there are many of you let me tell you something you should have no business looking at any lady if you have not looked at your life any lady that passes around you are just laughing can, can we be friends I, let's just go out what to wear to wear time is going the morning face of your life is going I'm challenging you in this place there are some it's as if you would die who is with you many brothers you can't see a sister pass she's fine so walk quickly walk quickly don't let any brother just come to you somebody whose destiny is confused he doesn't even know what he's doing just comes around and twisting his tongue around you i, I think um we should we should get along along where There are all kinds of relationships that don't make sense. Relationships like occultism, like secret society. The people are moving. No vision. They are not going anywhere. They know they are not going to get married. They, they never talk about their future. They are always playing around, playing games. Do you know the hurtful thing, sister? Let me encourage you. That brother can dump you and ask another lady out the next day. But you, it can't be like that for you. It's time to be serious. It's time to be serious. Tell yourself, wake up. Tell yourself, wake up. The Bible says, Arise thou that sleepeth, and Christ shall give thee light. Financial intelligence. How did I get into relationship? Hallelujah. The second is financial planning. So financial intelligence talks of all the knowledge and the information. I was talking about four phases of our lives. Morning phase, the learning state. Afternoon phase, the investment state. Between 25 to 50 years, according to the word of God and according to the principles of God, that's the time for you to have built a house. That's the time for you to have raised and trained your children. Are you getting my point? That's the time for you to have done certain structural things around your life. The evening stage of your life is the time of resting and legacy. That's when you should be resting. That's the time you should turn back and start writing books. Have a foundation that is blessing and building others. There are many of our parents, 70 years, they are struggling, even fighting with us. The land is my own. The son says, I paid you 10 years ago. I, say, I can't remember. And it shouldn't be. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Wake up. There are some of us here, the truth is God has been faithful. Some of our parents have trusted us with lots of money, lots of things. We are there playing around, doing all kinds of things. Tonight, I'm not condemning you, but I'm saying for the first time, brother, can you just tell my, yourself, where am I going? The Bible says, when the prodigal son came to himself, nobody conducted deliverance. You can come to yourself. And tonight, God is asking somebody to come to himself. Tell yourself, wake up. Say it, wake up. So financial planning. It's often said that he who fails to plan has planned to fail. You must know how to plan your resources. Plan your resources. Hallelujah. Plan your resources. Structure your life. There's still one more session. The session of wealth creation. I'm going to teach you. When I teach you on streams of income. The secret to oceanic wealth. Um, investment mentality. Three to five year plan for wealth. We'll, we'll round up with that one. Hallelujah. Financial planning has to do with the execution of your ideas, the execution of your knowledge. You don't just get up and start doing business or get up and just get a job. What do you want in your life? Look at me. Let me just give you a bit of the theory of financial planning. Right. How much do you think you will need for consistent cash flow per month? 
please don't write anything that doesn't make sense something very reasonable how much do you think how much do you know i'm not forget about your job or what you are doing how much cash flow do you think you will require to be effective this is financial planning and then you bring together a summation of all your assets and liabilities what are your expenditures what are your expenditures expenditures are the things that take money from you assets are the things that bring money to you if your liabilities are greater than your assets you are going to be broke there's no question about that next week is miracle service but oh by the way let me just ship it in here next week we're meeting at charity and faith please take note the miracle service will be taking place at charity and faith please write it and don't forget let's not have people coming here charity and faith 5 30 liabilities are the things that take money from you so if you are buying perfume you are buying a nice cloth that's liability what asset is replenishing the resource that liabilities are taking are you getting me so it's a game of asset and liabilities wealthy people always have more assets than liabilities i don't want to go ahead of myself next week i will be talking or after the last series will be the first week of march we'll talk about the rich and the poor what is the difference between them and then a few things will wrap up that series right i will come back i will revisit these things again financial planning very important you must know how to plan your finances i will teach you when we come back to this i'll teach you the principles of budgeting many of us don't know how to budget you spend as it comes ten thousand you blow it fifty thousand you blow it five thousand we do not understand and it's not our fault you must know how to budget look at me if sam has ten thousand naira all right and you come to sam and you say please i want to drink ice cream and Sam says, sorry, I don't have money for ice cream. It doesn't mean he doesn't have money. It's that within his budget, he has structured his money such that there is no room for ice cream. Are you getting my point? When you budget, you will know how to save. You will know how to build your life. One of our sisters in this place, I remember she came and met me. She had been saving years ago and she met me early this year. And she said, I want to buy a plot of land and I looked at her I said what tiny lady like you have you I hope of course you can't say she stole money but she had been practicing some of these principles and right now she went and bought land this is a young lady she's not just waiting and hoping for one man to come and say I married you I paid your dowry keep quiet at her age So I will teach you principles of budget. That's all about financial planning. To know how to plan your life. You can't just do it. There are many ways you can help yourself to plan finances. Every time money comes, I've taught you. Part of it is for God. Part of it is for you. Part of it is for your future. You must develop a futuristic investment mentality. You can't just spend and eat everything. You are going to build one day. You are going to build one day. You are going to, if you don't have land, you are broke. I don't care how much you have. Kings in ancient times were rich because of two things. Land and people. Land and people. Land, all the cattle and everything, they were together with the land. That's why land is called real estate. When I teach you on wealth creation, I'm going to teach you the trinity of wealth hallelujah we talk about the secret to oceanic wealth we'll talk about all of that multiple streams of income i don't want to go into it the last phase is financial discipline after making all those planning it takes discipline everybody say financial discipline there are so many people january they wrote they, they write a lot of things i want to do this i want to do that but they don't end up doing it maybe your goal this year is to say i want to save fifty thousand or hundred thousand and you are saying that based on the ten ten thousand that is coming for you every month 
and you made up your own 15,000 that you will live just within the range. See, let me tell you something. Um, we'll still do that wealth creation, but let me just say it. There is what they call in the business world the 70 30 principle. Please write it the 70 30 principle. What that means is that out of the hundred percent of your money that comes. 10% is for God and 20% is for savings towards investment. The remaining 70% is your own. Whatever 70% of your income cannot give you, you are not yet ready for it. Are you getting me now? So you can have 100,000. For instance, if 100,000 comes, how much is your tithe? How much will you save now? 20,000. So you are saving 20,000. Open an account that the branch is not in Zaria. It's one way of helping yourself. Destroy your ATM. Break it into pieces. It's one way of helping yourself. Hallelujah. Everybody say discipline. By and large, at the end of every planning is discipline that separates men from boys. Anybody can say, I will do this. Discipline is the ability to stay on course. The ability to abide by your principles. You must be disciplined. It's very tempting. You just enter a boutique and you see a very nice dress. And you feel like buying it maybe because they are giving discount. And you look at 70% of your money. You budgeted it and you found out that there's no space. You can't just say, let me quickly touch from that one you see that's indiscipline may god bless our mothers i said it during kingdom wealth summit women are better savers than men true or false yeah it's true it's very true it's very true you can see a woman she can be collecting a salary of twenty thousand, but she can be saving two two or four four thousand and a man who is collecting 100,000 will come and be begging her and she can bring some money out. She won't keep it in the bank. She can keep it in... Women keep money in all kinds of places. But at least it works. Women spend and spend and spend. I'm very bad in saving. I don't waste money, but I, I give to a fault, I believe. So because of that one now, I am very bad in saving. Praise God. And so I had to create a system and a structure to help me. You must understand yourself and plan and be disciplined. Some of you right now, you came out to pay your tithe. And the sincere truth is, they sent some money for you. This is end of the month. Some of you next month, they are going to send something. Some of you, your salaries are coming in. Begin to save. If you're married, agree with your wife. Tell her, honey, let's we're, we're going to plan our future. Let me tell you something. At the end of this series, I'm going to give you a five-year plan. Hallelujah. Within five years, if you follow this plan, there is nothing on earth that will stop you from being a millionaire. Five years, realistically. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you'll understand that the Lord the principle of seed faith. Please give me 10 minutes and we'll be done. I must teach you on this. The principle of seed faith. Or a robot is believed to be the man who opened the body of Christ to the revelation behind what we call the principle of of seed faith and i must teach you please listen i'm about to share with you a very powerful key there are not many times i tell you i'm about to share something deep i want you to believe it this principle has been abused but there is a balance first corinthians 9 thank you holy spirit
Zila kaprosha tele mandu kriata la koso subada. Sorry, Second Corinthians. Did I say first? Second Corinthians nine. Let's see the principle of seed faith. What is it? Verse 5. But this I say then. Because of time, we'll just go straight. Thank you. Thank you. This I say then. But that's verse 6. I'm sorry. 6. God attaches giving. He, he, he correlates giving to sowing. Are you getting my point? The art of giving, he likens it to a farmer. Please, let's read. I'm about to show you something. But this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap what? So he's talking about sowing. Sowing, is that true? And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also. Next verse. Now he says, every man according to his purpose, according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him, so giving his sowing. Are you getting my point now? That's the revelation. He shows us the relationship that when you give, you are actually doing what? Sowing. He said, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for god loveth a cheerful giver so he talks about a sower as a giver the first revelation of seed faith is that every giving is sowing let me explain the law of the seed for you please write it the law of the seed is part of the principle of seed faith. everything is created from a seed everything is created from the seed a man puts a seed into a woman she gives him a baby is that true the structure of the kingdom every time jesus speaks about the kingdom he says the kingdom of god is likened unto a seed a farmer went to sow so everything in the kingdom operates based on seed write it seed harvest see just draw a line seed harvest that means every harvest you want to see in your life i'm teaching you the principle of seed faith now you must understand the law of a seed that your harvest according to genesis 8 22 and second corinthians 4 is dependent on your seed that means when you see that there is any harvest you desire find the seed that can produce that harvest honor is the is the seed for what access thank you i taught you this already so every time you want access and doors are closing what is the seed you want a harvest of honor when god wanted a family he gave his seed jesus christ he sowed jesus christ in the earth and he brought many sons into glory are you getting my point now so this is a very consistent principle The gift of a man is the seed for greatness, the seed for prosperity. Tithe is the seed for open heavens. Prayer and fasting are the seeds for revival. Nothing is going to change it. People can teach all kinds of garbages and theory. Prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Prayer is also the seed that produces the harvest of breakthrough among other things is any man afflicted james 5 13 let him pray hallelujah the baptism in the holy ghost is the seed for walking in the spirit and the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit so you see that every time you desire a harvest i'm teaching you the principle of seed faith now every time you desire a harvest find out what seed dr mike mudok said whatever you have not gotten is because you do not yet know how to receive it is someone getting blessed now 
the principle of seed faith look look at me everybody the principle of seed faith works on this revelation sowing something i have by faith in expectation of something that i do not have that i believe god will give me are you getting the point now sowing something i want something and that i can lay down a seed as a symbol of my faith that's why it's called seed faith are you getting my point now that you can lay down something connecting it to something you're trusting god to do this is the summary of the principle of seed faith does it work absolutely it has a place in the kingdom it is a powerful principle i have seen in my own life hallelujah i touched a bit on it the law of honor commanding results the principle of seed faith is that you connect with a seed a desire that you have something that you desire god to bring to pass in your own life you can use a seed to tap the grace of god upon a man's life you can use a seed to connect dimensions and anointings it is very possible you can tap you can use the principle of seed faith how many of you believe it it is a principle you begin to practice so if somebody buys a car or you want to get married pastor williams is married bishop is married Shade is married you package a seed and say man of god i'm trusting god please hear this it's not just a desire a seed can provoke certain things to happen in your life are you getting my point it has happened in my life i live in this reality the powerful thing about seed let's connect it with that teaching on sacrifice now is that in practicing the principle of seed faith the lord himself tells you what to lay down attaching your faith to it for something you desire i cannot count how many times god has asked me to empty my account into ministries and into the lives of people and all of that connecting to certain things when i see a man of god that carries a grace that i desire i don't just come and kneel down and say please lay hands on me i activate the law of seed faith and i say with this seed it works i told you last week when jacob when isaac wanted to bless his sons he said go and make me what venison bring a seed that will provoke something in my life please listen don't think this is a gimmick to bring money out of your life there are certain levels in this life that it will take seed faith to connect you into you can enter cheaply into certain dimensions as a ministry god has helped us to enter some dimensions cheaply by the operation of the law of seed faith i remember one of my pastor friends he went into a city he was starting a church and the church was not opening up and he called me and i laughed i said my brother stop struggling just get a pen and paper let me teach you how to cause a city to open if you want to plant a church when you enter the city find the largest church in that place and package a seed there is something that makes people to come there whether you believe in them or not is irrelevant the people are not idiots you cannot criticize the largest church in a city and expect your church to walk in that dimension it does not just happen so you sow the seed of honor and you get a reward back for it i repented from criticizing men of god years ago when one elderly woman called me and said my son don't ever talk about any man of god again i said mommy i repent this day in the presence of god and you my mouth is sealed i can only attack wrong doctrines attack nonsense but i'm not going to mention any if i ever mention the name of a man of god is because i'm saying something right are you getting my point now you can never criticize bishop stan and want his anointing to come it just doesn't happen are you getting my point honor is not just money 
honor is not just money you hold people in in true genuine esteem in your heart and then what is in them flows to you you can provoke certain dimensions with a seed listen to me god is speaking to someone every time you ask god for a new level he will give you an instruction there is something you must lay down to go up you must lay down isaac to go up i know that a lot of people have deceived the church they have manipulated things but it does not mean that it's not there there are some of us who have been praying about certain realms and certain dimensions i remember when Ora roberts was almost dying there was a time he was almost dying it was apparent that he was going to die he called his wife and he said honey how much do we have in the account and she told him he said go and sow everything quickly he said do you love me he said yes she was trying to complain he said go and sow everything quickly do you know as soon as they dropped that seed all of a sudden he started resuscitating and he stayed many more years your seed can connect you to graces doors anointings dimensions in the spirit please i want you to believe me there are people today i know that they carry certain things that god has put in my life in very evident ways Oyedepo came to Dunamis and he was talking about Enensha. He said that when you see my son, you see that he carries certain things evidently, correctly. I want you to know that your seed is one of the greatest miracles that can happen to you. It can end a season in your life and open up another season. We tried this this year as a ministry. I told the treasurer, package every collection in our koinonia service and we went to sow it. Goodness, goodness, goodness. The results have been fearful. God did something today that touched me in a very personal way. Hallelujah. Somebody sent a very humbling seed into the ministry today hallelujah i want you to believe this i want you to believe you must not pay for everything in life if you understand the principle of seed faith i was sharing i think with the head of protocol every time i see people with vehicles and all of the rest i tell them sow it sow it sow it i went to just two days ago on getting to my house i saw a vehicle parked somebody bought a car for me dropped it there. True story. Two days ago. Somebody bought a car and dropped it. I just left it there. And I just quietly came back. I have seen this thing work in my life. Every time what you have is not enough for a harvest. It is a seed. If you are afraid to lay it down, you can never rise to another level. Listen. God is speaking to many of us here. There are instructions that many of us are afraid. Money never leaves you. That is why money never comes to you. If you conquer greed in your life, you will rise to certain levels of grace. I'm teaching you these irrefutable principles of prosperity. Hallelujah. I remember a time when Kenneth Cope, um, David Oyedeko carried a seed and took it to his mother he bought shares for her and a table with his first salary and she looked at him and she prophesied upon him she said you shall be great i never go home without a seed to honor my parents never 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 impossible even if i'm dying of hunger i know that that is what will get me out of where i am many of you do not believe in this principle i'm challenging you you can sow your way out of your present level into a level beyond your imagination i will never forget when i carried singlet i carried singlet and i packaged it and i blessed somebody pastor singlet started coming i didn't know what to do with it yeah i'm not exaggerating hallelujah there are so many gifts that people give me today i don't need I don't know what to do with it but it cannot stop coming because i know how to make it happen 
whatever is not in your life you do not know how to receive you must challenge yourself this night greed will keep you in poverty forever the law of seed faith works i've seen it break open doors for people i'll never forget one woman who came to me she was barren and honestly the, the normal thing is just to pray cast out that spirit of barrenness but the lord said that she should go to her pastor and sow a seed and she said man of god i confirm this the lord has been speaking to me about this and she carried that seed do you know she dropped that seed it was not up to two weeks two weeks two weeks he didn't even pray for her who is god speaking to tonight could it be that the answer to the next level of your life is hidden in your seed hallelujah we are going to pray and I want to challenge you there are many of you as you pray God is going to give you dangerous instructions that's why I said we we'll take the principle of seed faith at the end of this service please make no I love you too much to rob you of one naira I love you too much not to tell you the truth there are people that God is speaking to you right now God is speaking to you and is telling you that this is the secret to enter the next level you have been admiring people you are seeing people rise to those levels but you think it just happens by dash it's not about wishing there is a law the Bible says as far as the earth remains seed time and harvest I want to challenge you we are going to pray I want everybody before we pray just take one minute and talk to the Lord and say Lord what instruction are you giving me what seed do I need to lay down to rise to a level please if you do not believe what I'm sharing don't worry don't worry God is talking to many people right here there is something you have in your hand he said what do you have in your house hear me many of you this is what will break some chains in your family this is what will break some cycles of poverty some of you this is the seed that can make you graduate this is the seed that can make your supervisor listen to you if you don't believe what i'm saying no problem no problem but i have seen in my life i have seen god coming in fearful ways in my life i will never forget when we were preparing for massacre crusade there was nothing we were broke to the core it was the principle of seed faith that blessed and honored us it was one man of god i sent recharge card of one five to his phone one man of god i sent that seed and almost every day almost every day from the day we took a seed and we sowed it in canaan land there is almost no day that nobody is sowing in this that somebody does not sow into this ministry whether in cash whether in kind somebody needs to sow this seed for their marriage i'm speaking to you this is not coercion god is going to give i'm not going to give you any instruction bring any money i'm not god is speaking to you you just talk with god for one minute and i'm going to lead us to pray Somebody's miracle is long overdue. Mandela Kapo Salabadaba. Jesus, speak to us. Open your heart and hear your maker speak. There is always something you must do you will remain at that level forever until you know how to provoke your way out or a robot touch the body of christ this has been abused but hear me koinonia may the lord god of heaven judge me if i stand before the people of god and mislead them seed faith will take you out of certain seasons will take you out of certain seasons you don't need to know how the miracle will happen you can provoke your way you can provoke your way 
there are people here the Lord is speaking to you the Lord is speaking to you there are sacrifices that you are going to make I don't pity you at all I rejoice with you I made this sacrifice I told you years ago I will never forget when I carried everything that I had my bag my whole belonging and I took it for a prosperity convention home and abroad I dropped it and the Lord told me from this day you have entered wealth we are going to pray if you cannot give up what you have at your present level you don't deserve to move to a higher one I'm giving you a key in the spirit rise up please we are going to pray hallelujah hallelujah I want to challenge everybody please bring out a seed bring out something I'm willing to help a few people if you do not have I can help you honestly it's not about money brothers and sisters any come a few people and you can take two more people hallelujah there's still one more person I want you to connect okay sorry come come Hallelujah. Please, instrumentalist, please play. There are two ways to bind Satan. By prayers and by knowledge. I have seen the principle of seed faith work in my life. I've seen God change situations in very fearful ways for my family. My mother did something in my life. I was studying all the things she did that brought breakthrough in her in her in her business and i found out that there was something my mother did it was casual until the day the lord revealed to me my mother took out time and prepared chicken this chicken you know she prepared it for me not just as her son but as a man of god and it opened her every time i go to greet them at home before i come has prepared it that is her own seed my blood mother to tap into the anointing of the spirit upon my life when i went home my father was going to the airport i ran i said i must pay for the luggages i must pay i insisted i must pay for the luggages what have you not seen in your life that you desire i want you to hold this seed we are going to pray you're going to say lord for many of us god is giving you instructions even beyond today i'm not talking about project Ten Thousand. project Ten Thousand is, is 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 something in the house but god is speaking to specific people right now and i want you to pray please begin to pray in tongues and say lord this is it i'm tired of where i am i'm tired of where i am oh god Please pray passionately as though you understand what you are doing inside or outside some of you are face to face with destiny right now don't let greed kill you God is speaking to somebody you can rise to this level except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone but if it dies if it dies if it dies what can you give up to go up god is speaking to someone what can you give up to go up my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you oh god my praise is calling you, oh God. My honor is calling you. Hallelujah. Now I'd like you to begin to pray and say, Lord, I tie this challenge in my life to this seed. I believe it. Please pray. I tie this terminal disease. It is not the money that brings the miracle. 
is the sacrifice that is tied to your faith I tie it to this lack I tell you next week we will take a harvest of miracles of unspeakable breakthroughs some of you from this seat tonight your loved ones will call you people who have forgotten about you my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you hallelujah please lift your seed everybody i want to pray you'll be amazed at what will happen to you and your seed right now i want to pray if you believe that i'm a servant of god i want you to lift your seed i want to pray i want to show you the power of seed faith my father in the name of the lord jesus let your anointing come upon these seeds that are lifted i pray in the mighty name of jesus let this seed i let the fire of the holy ghost come upon your seed let it come upon your seed i tie it to breakthroughs i tie it to breakthroughs my god we have not got a lie we have not got cunningly devised fables goodness i provoke by the power of seed faith let sicknesses die i provoke let carryovers end i provoke it took a sacrifice for covenants to be enacted we use this seed to break covenants to break yokes of financial hardship yokes of perpetual suffering yokes of pain yokes of defeat anoint this seat anoint this seat i stretch my hands under this apostolic anointing i stretch my hands let there be financial miracles let there be financial miracles i provoke it right now in the name of the lord jehovah whose i am and whom i serve i command those who have forgotten you i command them to call you i command them to bless you i command restoration i break covenants of hardship jobless situations by the power of seed faith i release miracle jobs i terminate barrenness i terminate barrenness my god honor this house honor this house with dramatic testimonies let your shakina rest upon this seed let your glory let your glory i command instant harvest in this glory i command harvest supernatural miracles financial miracles for as many that believe for as many that believe let there be shakings in families shakings in businesses shakings in marriages those trusting god for a spouse i pray by that seed every manifestation of spirit husband and spirit wife that stops you from marriage i cause it i cause it i cause it Sacrifice is calling you, oh God. Our sacrifice 
the Lord is giving people instructions what you must do to live where you are a sacrifice you don't need to know anybody they that know their God they shall be strong a sacrifice is calling you hallelujah hallelujah please ushers leave the offering baskets father this is not just a gimmick for money I pray in the name of Jesus that every seed that comes upon this basket let there be such an anointing that will follow your people teach them through experience the power of seed faith in the name of Jesus go ahead drop your seed and start blasting in tongues drop your seed and start blasting in tongues for the next five minutes for the next five minutes for the next five minutes just drop your seed and start blasting in tongues we're stepping into a new level financial dominion by the power of the Holy Ghost financial dominion by the power of the Holy Spirit if they be willing and obedient they shall eat the good of the land if they be willing and obedient hallelujah hallelujah now listen hold on i want us to do a quick experiment to show you this works pick this and write three things that you tied your seed to and watch if they come to pass please write it let's do it Ora Roberts was asked before he died what is the greatest lesson you want to teach the body of Christ it says sowing your seed with expectation in your heart because the Bible says the expectation of the righteous don't just sow your seed blindly I want you to write for many of you there are instructions God has given you beyond today but write write three things and say Lord when I gave this seed this was what I tied to it Brothers and sisters, I've seen this work in my life. Oh yes, I have seen God do fearful things. Father, honor these things. Prove to your people that the principle of seed faith is not just a man-made theory to siphon resources out of them. My God, I pray that for many people between now and the miracle service in the name that is above all names many of you God will shock you you will give testimonies your family members will send in testimonies the online community will send in testimonies that will shock you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord tonight's teaching is a very powerful one and I believe that this will be a very strong spiritual arsenal that you will want to add to the many arsenals that God has granted us access to here remember that our victory in this kingdom within the time and the dispensation that we have to serve the purposes of God is predicated upon the sufficiency of our equipping hallelujah that means that we must sustain the ability to access every spiritual arsenal within our disposal because our lifetime will necessitate one or more of these arsenals and so every time we come before god we must listen for a dimension of truth that will be given to us that will be useful 
for our destinies. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we're already in November. I was thinking about it today and I said, can you imagine truly how time flies? This is November 2019. January this year and every year is about the most motivated year uh, or motivated months for many people. They're inspired, challenged, pressed to do a lot of things. And many times by the time we get to September, October, November, most people are already gassing out. And um, so the Lord inspired a very powerful teaching in my heart that I believe will bless us in no small way in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want to teach on the concept of strength. Um, it is very powerful what I want to share because these are the kinds of teachings that are applicable to all and sundry. These are the teachings that we will need for the now and also in the future. Um, the goal is to open us up to a very thorough understanding of strength and the role that it plays in a believer's life in his accomplishing the purposes of God. The Bible very clearly reveals scattered through scripture that strength is the fuel of destiny. Please listen very carefully. The Bible reveals again and again that when people get to the end of their destinies it is proof that they accessed sufficient strength hallelujah praise the lord it is a very important thing ephesians chapter 3 please verse 16 the whole text runs to 21 but we'll just pick one scripture one verse 16 ephesians 3 please help us paul is praying and speaking to the church in ephesus and he said that he would grant you paul is asking the lord to grant unto the church according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man it's a very powerful prayer the apostle is praying for a people who would later go through all kinds of things. The, the oppression that would come from Emperor Nero and others who would come and attack the gospel. He was praying for a people who some of them would be martyred in their lives. He was praying for people who sometimes would lose their lives for the gospel. And he said, listen, I pray that you be strengthened not in your arm in your inner man by the spirit and so we need a lot of strength for the journey of destiny proverbs chapter 21 please proverbs chapter 21 continues to emphasize the need for strength in a believer's journey 21 proverbs 24 i beg your pardon verse 10 Proverbs 24 verse 10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, the diagnosis is that what? Your strength is small. Modern cars, very modern cars are so equipped that when the fuel is getting to reserve, certain features that use the fuel will minimize or stop working. Is that true? The AC may be minimized, the capacity as proof that the fuel is going down. And when you refill it again, you find out that all of those futures are back. It's a system of conserving what is left so that the car will not die. And the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. The first revelation I want you to get is that among the many days in a man's life, there is a day called the day of adversity. Jesus said, this is your hour and the power of darkness. It's a message to strengthen the body of Christ because for many people, our lives and our experiences have not been exactly the best in the midst of all the joy and the celebration 
There are people right now who have been bereaved. There are people right now who um, have lost jobs, have lost opportunities. I got a text, um, I think this afternoon or so, while I was praying about a family who had been praying for a dead corpse for a few days, still believing that that dead body will come back to life. Now, it's very difficult to teach these kinds of things because believers, um, it is not in, in our normal human, um, it is not a normal desire to want to admit that days like this are part of the days in a man's life. It is difficult for you to think that a day can come when you will stand before a corpse of your loved one. It is difficult for you to think that one day you will stand and watch your eviction letter from a landlord. Everybody wants to be positive. Everybody wants to move forward. It is difficult for you to stand and then get a doctor's report that you thought your wife was pregnant and she wasn't pregnant. It is difficult to get a report that tells you you have cancer and the cancer is dying, your kidney has failed and all of that. And most believers are not mentored into the spiritual system allocated by which the saints remain strong. Are we blessed? Yes. This is the reason why several people, when they confront challenges in their lives, when they confront things that negate their faith, when their prayers and their expectations don't come to pass, many are discouraged, many are depressed, many leave God, many even die. Tonight's message will bless you in no small way and add it to the spiritual archives of your life because for as long as you live, you will need it one day. Hallelujah. As a man of God, I've had the privilege to weep with many families who have lost their loved ones. People have lost jobs. People have celebrated. People have done all kinds of things. And sometimes it's very difficult to let believers see. And sometimes we preachers, especially for us that God has granted grace to walk in the miraculous and to walk in the truths of the word of God, it's difficult to also create space in our teaching where we help people understand that it is not unusual when believers pass through turbulent times in their lives and their family. It's usually not a message that is very accepted. It is not pleasant. And so when the believer is now sick, when the person now has an accident, when something happens, it becomes difficult to explain. Are we blessed? If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Hallelujah. Psalms 46 and then verse 1 to 3. Please write it down. Psalm 46, verse 1 and 3. Look up while I read. It says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Verse 2. It says, though, therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed. Now, I don't know what the psalmist was thinking in his mind. <laughs> But I'm a very creative person. When I read the Bible, I take it seriously. Though the earth be removed, do you know what that means? That the earth is removed. Then we stand on what? <laughs> Are we together now? It says, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, verse 3, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, it says, God is our refuge and our strength. One more scripture, and then we'll discuss a few things. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Paul is speaking to the church in Philippi, and this is what he says. I can do all things, but he says, I can only do them through the strength that Christ gives. It takes strength to do all things. It takes strength to build a house. It takes strength to build a company. 
it takes strength to build a marriage it takes strength to build your spiritual life it takes strength to go from glory to glory and paul is saying i can only do all things by the strength that christ supplies that means outside of that strength i may not be able to do many things that my destiny require this is very important these scriptures all show us that believers need strength everybody says strength in fact the bible says in daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 it says but the people the b part now that do know their god one of the rewards for knowing god in a believer's life is strength hallelujah strength let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters it takes a while for the word of god to prevail over a man's life for results to begin to be produced it takes a while for church to grow it takes a while for the business to grow that staying power to push and to remain until the word prevails is what many believers lack and sadly sometimes we preachers in a bit to challenge and encourage people we continue to make people feel that the moment the word of god does not work immediately something may be wrong with your faith so when the person cannot pay his or her rent once the person cannot pay his or her bills sometimes they get um they get into that mold that begin to suggest that they do not love god it is not so strength is required it is a finisher's requirement in this kingdom hallelujah let's discuss the concept of weariness i studied this and it blessed me in no small way the bible lets us know that men can be weary that the moment you are a mortal man on earth the possibility of exhaustion the possibility of discouragement the possibility of being depressed by the vicissitudes of life is something that can always catch up with you are we together now psalm 23 from verse 1 and verse 3 the reality of weariness psalm 23 it says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want and then when you go to verse 2 he says he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters the revelation is in verse 3 he restored my soul that means the soul of a man can need restoration the same way your body needs rest a time can come you are fucked out by all the things that happen in life all men can be weary pay attention to this revelation it is a very powerful one isaiah chapter 40 popular scripture from verse 29 in fact let's start from verse 28 it says has thou not known has thou not heard 40 28 that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not neither is he weary so he's talking about weariness he says there is no searching of his understanding 29 he says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength are we together now so these scriptures show that men can be weary one time jesus carrying the burden of the cross he got to gethsemane and the bible says that he prayed and the prayer was like drops of blood and then from thence he carried the cross and on his way to golgotha at a point he fell down with the cross to the point that they had to get a man called simon of cyrene the nigger to help him leave the cross otherwise he would not be able to get to golgotha are we together now yes moses was weary one time and he said lord i don't know the kind of people you have anointed me to lead these people are a stiff-necked people right now i tell them god is saying this they rejoice tomorrow they stand before the sea and they point to me and say moses you are the reason we would have eaten cucumber and and locusts and all of that at least it was better now you are taking us to a supposed promised land we are standing before the red sea and moses said lord you know what please come and handle this your people so men can be weary 
Elijah the prophet, when a woman was pursuing him, he ran one time and hid. And then he didn't know what to do with his life. And the guy was tired. Jonah's own was even a disturbing situation because Jonah literally, knowing that a man cannot run away from God, Jonah opted to run. And <laughs> Jonah's running was legitimate. Why was it legitimate? He said, God, I know you are a merciful God. After these wicked people finish punishing me, I now go and preach. They will fast, they will repent, and you will act. You are wasting my time so that I will become the scapegoat. And Jonah was on his way. He now entered a boat, caused trouble in the boat, and the people casted lots. And they said, you know what? We are going to throw this man out. And then right he goes to the belly of the fish. Man can be weary. Elijah was receiving supernatural supplies at Bukcheri. One day the Bible says the brook dried. Hmm. The brook dried. So the reality of the weariness of men is something that we must get used to it. Listen, believers can be exhausted. Know this and let it be factored in your Christian experience as you walk with God. That it is not unspiritual to get to a point in your life where you become exhausted. You can be exhausted over your children's school fees. A parent one day can look at his child and say, ah, why, why did these children, how did I even allow these children come? And sometimes you feel guilty and you feel bad. It is the reality of weariness. Are we together now? Yes. House rent. They slash your salary by half. They increase your salary by, they increase your house rent by double. And you stand before your landlord and you don't know what to tell him. What sermon do I now preach to this man? My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. When believers become weary, we must sustain the intelligence on how to navigate. You are a man of God, you are anointed, but nobody is placing a demand on your grace. Hmm. You go to a crusade and finish preaching, you make an altar call after three hours of preaching and only two people stroll out. As though they are pitying you. They just stroll out and stand. And you ask them to pray the salvation prayer. They don't even pray it. And you stand there. Lord, did you call me? Or what, what is If you didn't call me, just tell me. I will politely look for something else to do. Men can be very, very weary. I remember one time, a particular gentleman was preparing for his, his marriage. And... Um, you know, God will make a way, pushing things. And then a point got, it became Kai. Apostle, I said, just, just push forward. There is grace. I mean, the finisher's anointing is a possibility in the kingdom. <laughs> but honestly speaking, he got to a point where it was about one week to the wedding. And uh, the bills were a mountain that were refusing to move. And everybody can prophesy and say, I saw your wedding happening already. But it's true in the realm of the spirit. But now, the possibilities to make it happen in the physical realm didn't seem to be there. And up until four or so days, I remember having to call the gentleman and to encourage him and to say, look, don't worry. God is faithful. There is God that sits in the heavens. Many years ago, another gentleman was preparing for his marriage and three days to the wedding he refused to go to the city where he would get married yes i mean he just had to just lord i don't know what you would do with me but it's three days to my marriage there are bills house rent i've seen it squash people ministry when you have a crowd of people five thousand ten thousand and then everything begins to go down and you can barely have 500 what happens when these kinds of seasons come in your life praise the lord so weariness is a reality with all men and this is why we need strength now i have identified from scripture two major causes of weariness please pay attention there are two major causes that can make believers any individual to be wary number one according to scripture is hope deferred proverbs chapter 13 please and verse 12 give it to us media let's hurry up hope
deferred. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree that can minister life. So one of the reasons why people can be exhausted, one of the reasons why people can be um, discouraged and broken is prolonged expectation. Listen very carefully. Hope deferred can literally make the heart. The word heart there is spirit. The Bible says a man's spirit can break, not just a human body. If your body is broken, the doctor can treat it. If your soul is broken, a therapist can psychologically manage you. But when your spirit is broken, the Bible says no man is able to bear it. Are we together now? Hope deferred. Results that you expect in your life do not come. You expected that at age 30 you would have built a house. You expected that by the time you have four children you should be financially free. You expected that by the time you are 10 years in ministry you should be established and have membership. When hope is deferred it can torture the heart. Are we blessed? The number one reason why believers get worried. Let me tell you this. We are beings of results. Let me use you. And we desire advancement. Everybody say advancement. This gentleman, there is an instinct in him to continue to make progress. That means that this year or this month, next year or next month, there should be progress. By the time an individual is caused, whether by life or whatever it is, to either retrograde or stagnate it is dangerous the bible says it can do something to you that no man can bear are, are we together now yes there are people who you know reach me and send me text messages and say apostle i am tired and frustrated i've been in ministry you know when this brother was sharing his testimony i sat back there and i was just nodding my head because it is painful when you tell people the call of God is upon your life and there are no results to testify. Results are powerful. Results validate many things. Among them that you are operating by laws correctly. Among them that you are in the will of God. So when results, when your life is barren of results, it can do something to your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once prayed with a family that were trusting God for a miracle for their child. They had a child, but the child had a condition that was a very serious thorn in the flesh for the family. Very young boy. I mean, he could go wild and even injure his siblings. Very blessed man, but that thing was just there. And I remember when I wanted to pray for them and I was encouraging them. Um, I closed my eyes to pray and then I opened my eyes and I saw the man still looking at me. Now, you may laugh. It's not unbelief. It is what weariness can do to the spirit. How many of you have gone to several men of God for prayer? They've prayed and prophesied and said it is done. And then the next time, I see it here sometimes when I'm praying for people on the queue. Oh Lord, I pray that, you, and, and the person, you, you know, he's just looking at you and just saying, look, just finish this prayer and let me go. Lazarus had been there three days. And when Jesus came, he said, I know in the resurrection when everything is gone. You know, I've told you that I've been kept a few times in the mortuary alone to pray for dead bodies. And it's an experience that is quite interesting. Because you will stretch your faith and watch a dead body immovable, sometimes already embalmed, and you don't know what to do there. You end up thinking about your own life in that, in that mortuary. I mean, that's the most profitable thing you can do because the body is... If you tell someone, stand up from a wheelchair, at least he can move his leg. It's just that the leg is not strong. But you speak to a dead body and you are even afraid of a dead body answering. <laughs> are we together? If the dead body actually answers. Remember, the door is closed for security reasons. 
Blessed be God. Hope deferred. Financial expectations, especially now in Africa and Nigeria. My God, the way this finance thing is doing people and the kinds of depression, depression, that someone can just stand by the road and just look at life and take a deep breath, go home, sit on a chair and die. Nothing exactly wrong, just the reality of life. Hallelujah. So we are beings of results and we are beings of progress. And the moment your life, listen, cannot attain onto certain levels of progress within an appreciable period of time, it is true that weariness can set in. The first reason, hope deferred, prolonged expectations. The second reason from scripture, why weariness sets into the lives and the destinies of people is called sorrow. Write it down, please. Sorrow. Sorrow. Are we together? What is sorrow? A feeling of deep distress. A feeling of deep distress that is caused by losses, caused by disappointments, caused by misfortune. A feeling of deep, dis deep distress caused by loss. Could be loss of a loved one. Could be loss of a job. Could be disappointment. You expected admission, like some of you probably. You expected the final year result to come out with you completely done. And now you are seeing an extra year there. Sorrow. And sorrow has symptoms. Let me list for you two or three of them. Number one is sadness. You can interpret sorrow by the sadness that is in the heart of a man. Number two, you can interpret sorrow or you can discern sorrow by depression. Human beings just become depressed. They have no inspiration to aspire at life again. Nothing is ever worth their energy or strength. Sorrow. Rise up, let's pray again. It's no use. Rise up, let's build a company again. It's no use. Rise up as the one who is now left to take care of your siblings. It's no use. Sadness, depression, downheartedness. I have met very discouraged, uninspired people in this life. And I have been shocked and broken by their approach to life. They can be on the road passing and a car is honing. And it makes no difference to them whether they die or leave. As far as they are concerned, they are dead. There are people like that. An example of such a person was Mephibosheth in the Bible. Mephibosheth had to come to terms with the reality of his being crippled. And the fact that he would never have the opportunity to make any good out of his life again. I hope you understand that in the days of Mephibosheth, there was no technology to draw inspiration from anybody. That guy was left there. So when King David sent for him, hear his response. Oh king, what do you have to do with a dog? When a man calls himself a dog, let me tell you, one of the characteristics of sorrow is you begin to name yourself what God did not call you. Life can push you down to a point where you start calling yourself what God has not called you. I am good for nothing. You can tell yourself. I cannot amount to anything. I am the worst in my family, you hear people say. I am the black sheep. No inspiration to aspire for a life that is great. People admit defeat and sit back there. And then before you know it, their lives fold. Because they do not sustain a superior revelation again. There are people who have packed up ministry and just said, you know what? This ministry thing, I quit. It's over. I've tried. There are people who have packed up businesses 
after failing 10, 15 times, they just say, you know what? I've done my best. There are people who have given up on their children. I'm sorry. I can't pay your school fees. I can't take care of you. Do whatever you want to do with your life. Sorrow is a very serious thing. I've had the opportunity to comfort families that have lost loved ones and sometimes no matter what you are saying the mother or the father is just looking at you they want to believe what you are saying they hope one day they will believe it but for that moment they don't are we together yes i think the admission list just came out or so for i think abu or i don't know which of the institutions and there were people who probably didn't get admission in the list that was released and some of them continued i i read some of their text messages and honestly tears were almost coming to my eyes because some of them said apostle 11 years apostle seven years apostle this one this one sorrow is a reason why weariness can eat a man like a cancer and you become a shadow of yourself because you are sorrowful so hope deferred and sorrow are two biblical causes of the weariness in men no wonder our world today is filled with depressed men medical people will tell you the volumes of drugs that are consumed especially by men do you know why because the inability to be able to provide the inability to be able to be there sometimes can so discourage the man he stands and says well i know i'm good for nothing i know i'm not able to take care of my wife and family and because of that they draw conclusions and like mephibosheth even when the king is calling they say don't call a dog call men I am a dog. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve. Serve you with my life. Serve you with my worship. You made me to see that your right hand but I choose to bow, bow in worship, bow in worship. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve, to serve you with my life, to serve you in worship. You made me to sit at your right hand, but I choose to bow, to bow in worship, bow in worship. There are times that you're reducing yourself is to honor God, but there are times that reducing yourself is because life has made you so. Life has beaten you to a point where you do not see that you can stand again. There are times when you are a king but you put your golden crown so that you will worship. But there are times it is not worship. It is just life that has hit you down. There are times you go on your knees because you are worshiping God. But there are times you go on your knees because you do not see any hope in life again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. You made me royalty, but I choose to serve, to serve you with my life, to serve you in worship. You made me to sit at your right hand, but I choose to bow, but I choose to bow. Bow my heart. I will never forget many years ago when one of our precious ones in this ministry 
went to be with the Lord. She was a leader, served God with all her heart, loved God. She was so dear to me. I loved her with my whole heart. And she quickly just went to do something and returned back. And I remember I was counseling someone. When a call comes to me, and then my attention is needed. And then they break the news that this is my most precious, precious daughter has transited to go to be with the Lord. I remember how I thought about it and I said, oh boy. I remember when God granted me the privilege to visit with the family and I held the mother and the mother began to sing and the mother began to encourage us and the mother began to rejoice. I said, stamina, that's what it's called. You know a man's level of spiritual dexterity, not when things are happening. But sometimes it's when nothing is happening. Do you have the staying power when the word of the Lord is yet to come through in your life? Do you have the staying power when the church has not opened up? Do you have the staying power when you are fasting and praying and the anointing does not seem to come upon your head? You watch all your colleagues and contemporaries already walking in certain dimensions, but for you, it is not there. You watch all your colleagues with jobs, some of them becoming managers, and here you are, after 15, 17 years, you are still looking for a job. Weariness, sorrow can set in. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. Let me teach you very quickly before we pray how to be strengthened in this kingdom. I show you keys that you will hold and your life will remain an unending wonder. I show you keys that you will hold and you will defeat life and beat it at its game. Hmm. How to be strengthened. Number one. The first key to draw strength in this kingdom is the revelation of the love of God. Write it down. The first key that is allocated by which we draw strength from in this kingdom is the revelation of the love of God. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. We'll look at a few scriptures very quickly. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not behold what manner of love let me tell you something the revelation of the love of God is therapeutic is a wonder that when you stand and look at life and the awareness that the monarch of the universe has invested his love upon you is a revelation that if understood can change your life. Hallelujah. People have received calls from presidents. People have received calls from diplomats. I've had a few calls in my life from great people, prominent people. And I can tell the excitement in my heart. Wow. Wow. This person, that person was able to reach out to me. I mean, it, it's very comforting and blessing. When the great reach out to you, it does something that is comforting and healing. And then the monarch of the universe looks down on you. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. It's a revelation you must have. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Fight still I'm found. Leaves that 
is found in Jeremiah 31 and verse 3. Powerful revelation. In a world of wickedness, in a world of selfishness, in a world that is governed by interest, it is a revelation to know Jeremiah, what did I say? Chapter, please search for me, I hope we got it right. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. That's right. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. It's a revelation. After the grace, this my adorable children will be here lined up to give me a wonderful hug and how I've so missed them. And every time I hug every one of these children, I look at their eyes and I see the confidence they have in fatherhood. This is what the Bible is saying. I have loved thee. Do you know what it means to have an everlasting love? I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Ha! Huh. This is the God of heaven. Believers, hear me. You will draw strength for the journey, for your ministry, for your life, for your children. When you understand this, it is true. Would you dance with me, your lover, of my soul, to the song of all songs? Preacher, hear me. Businessman, hear me. Dance with me. Of my soul to the song of all songs. Powerful revelation. The Bible says in First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine that eyes have not seen. Koinonia, hear me. God is comforting someone. Yes, have not heard. Neither has it been revealed to the heart of any man what God has in store for them that love him. There is a dealing with God that is in the realm of lovers. That God loves you so much he can sit down and think about you and plan something for your life that will make you a wonder and a shock. Please do not forget that when it comes to the sovereignty of God, God is not a man. It's a revelation I want you to hear. God is not limited by the limitations of men. Men are limited in knowledge. Men are limited in time. Men are limited in strength. But there is one who is called the monarch of the universe. And that when he decides to stand up and bless you and lift you, he will supply the strength and he will lift you the same way you press a button and a lift begins to rise. Is someone being edified tonight? The revelation of the love of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 says, For we know we are privy to an information in the, in the kingdom. We know that all things, not some things, all things work together. Please hear me. You lost a loved one. I know it is painful, but hear me. You lost money. You lost business. Your expectations disappointed. Let me tell you, we know. They may not know, but we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the call. Everything in a man's life is navigated by the love of God to square up to purpose and destiny. This is the wonder of the love of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Moses ran away 
from the, the Egyptians and he went to the backside of the mountain thinking he was running away from Egypt he did not know he was running to the place of encounter where he will meet the burning bush hmm. very powerful it's amazing how God navigates men through the path of destiny it's amazing how many times you don't even know you are led yet you are led in the midst of your confusion the finger of the ancient of days is upon you in the midst of your cluelessness about life yet he is guiding you by his spirit and then when you see the wonder of his intelligence you will stand back and join people and say you are truly the monarch of the universe I have seen this with my life this is how koinonia started i have seen this at different seasons of my life let me tell you something do not stand the way of the wisdom of god over a man that he loves do not stand the way of the wisdom of god the intelligence of god is so thorough he ensures that you win the love of god everybody say the love of god let it be a revelation that is in your heart don't give room and allow the devil to take advantage of your life and spy upon your liberty. No. Stand in the strength of the revelation of the love of God. For we know. Look at this. One day you will need this scripture sooner or later. For we know. Man of God, hear me. For we know. Businessman. Father. For we know. Apostle, I lost my father and my mother this year. I know it is painful. It doesn't make sense. But watch the intelligence of the one who designed the heavens and the earth. Listen, anytime your life looks clueless, tell yourself, keep watching. I've never had the opportunity to be, okay, well, I had once. I'm confessing now. Once in a drama group when I was in primary school. So fortunate I acted a rich man. I will never tell you the name. I know how bad you people are. You will not forget the name when I say it. They called me a wonderful name. They gave me pieces of paper and leaves. I was a politician in that drama. I would spray money and people would clap for me and so on and so forth. That was the only time I remember. Okay, well, and then a few other Christmas dramas here and there. But there's something I know about acting that there is someone called a movie director the movie director is the one invested with the intelligence of producing that movie sometimes the actors do not even understand the stretch they just know that in that movie you are acting you you die <laughs> in jesus name sam is refusing <laughs> you, you will not die in jesus name are we together now Yes. Do you know what it means to be mindful of a man? That means you sit down and invest your thought. To understand this, you must understand architecture. While you are talking to an architect, he's thinking, okay, so what do you want? I want a house. Let me prophesy someone's house already. I want... Oh, sit down, sit down. Canal people. We are dealing with serious issues this night. Are we together? And you are telling the architect, okay, I need it a duplex, I need three parlors, one for business, one for family, one for this. I need a kitchen as large as a living room. I need this. And while you are describing it, the architect, watch this. The architect is intelligently, he's, he's adding imagery to what you are saying. And even things you want that you don't know, by reason of his experience, he now, he's, he's, he's filtering your amateur communication and he's adding his intelligence on it. This is what this guy meant to say. While you are talking, your heart too is talking and he's listening to both of them and capturing them in the design of that house. When he's done and he brings you and you stand, you say, if I were to draw it, it would not look like this. Beauty glory elegance this is what the bible means that when god sits down in designing your destiny he designs it thoroughly with his intelligence he designs it in such a way that insists that you arrive 
have you seen architects design buildings and later on they find out that ah this soil the topography is not conducive and they say no problem they have to make adjustments but that building must come out i'm speaking to someone in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god the blueprint and the design for your destiny it must be actualized in your lifetime in the name of jesus the son of the living god please sit down sit down every building does not look like it till it's finished every preacher does not look like it till god is done with him every worshiper does not look like it everybody say the love of god it's a powerful revelation that god loves me you know i have i think in the last i don't know how many years now it has become a deep revelation some sometimes i think in life eh, as you grow in ministry in leadership and in age certain truths of scripture begin to crystallize in you again are, are we getting blessed please settle with the love of god because there are some of you here look at me your fathers your mothers your loved ones and everybody has concluded about you and you may not know the effect of that thing in your life until you get to a point where you just say can anything good come out of nazareth but the love of god oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of god oh he chases me listen listen to what you are singing Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. That's strange. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Look what God is doing in this ministry look what god is doing in our lives i continue to watch people as they grow in the spirit i continue to watch people transit like from egg lava pupa adult from a little shrub god is making many of us to become giants it does not look like it but be patient with god and watch the wisdom i say it again of the ancient of days it's a name he has to himself the revelation of the love of God let's hurry up so that we can pray number two the second way to be comforted the second way to be strengthened as a believer is the comfort of scripture please write it down make sure you are writing number one is the revelation of the love of God how we are strengthened number two is the comfort of scripture Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 Romans 15 please and verse 4 look up please if you can and let's read together one to read for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning uh-huh that we through patience and comfort of scripture might find hope do you know what this means let me interpret this to you the meaning of this is that there is nothing new under the sun and that the Bible has captured different experiences that can play in your life and has already given you a preview of how the end looks like. So that by the comfort of scripture, when for instance you are bereaved, you may not know if tomorrow will ever come, but you can open scripture and see someone who was bereaved and see how the person survived after it and you would draw strength from it. It's not called scripture. It's called the comfort of scripture. Job was a man in the Bible who is a classic example of a man going down to the lowest and rising back to the highest. Job in one day I'm not sure any man on earth has gone through that kind of experience. In one day, a man loses his daughters. In one day, a man loses his sons. In one day, a man loses his estates and his businesses. In one day, a man loses all of this. And then, before Job will finish coping with the sheer stress, his health is now affected. 
boils begin to come dogs will come and lick the boils of job many saw job and said oh dear once great job and here he's sitting only with the comfort of his wife and watch this god began to make a boast of job in the heavenlies and by the time we get to chapter 42 hallelujah the bible says verse 10 that and god restored the fortunes of job suddenly people began to come from everywhere and bring gift and the bible said all of them held a bag of money and gave him let me speak to someone the concept of things being over is not real did you hear what i said there is no such thing as it is over with god god can the worst thing that can happen is death resurrection is proof that god has conquered the power of death hallelujah please find your dream alive find your anointing alive get back and open the books that you wrote visions i will be a great worshiper i will sing to the nations men may not invite me now but in the name of jesus i find comfort in scripture that for a long time david was in the wilderness but a day came he appeared before saul your soul will call you for sure one day so david continue to learn how to play they may not invite you but stay until the season of appearing comes it is true apostle we've been trusting god for the fruit of the womb 10 years 15 years through the comfort of scripture god refers you to go to the patriarch father abraham and see what 25 years of endurance produce and when abraham finally held isaac they laughed and said all who here will laugh with me Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah. taken the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace undeniable there's no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father my every Psalms 119 verse 28. Please sit down. Want us to pray tonight? Psalms 119 verse 28. Please make sure you are writing these scriptures. You can comfort someone with it after service. You can minister to your family member. You can go and fast with this scripture and pray. My soul melted for heaviness. It says strengthen thou me according to your word use your word to strengthen me i cannot pay the rent now but use your word to strengthen me use your word to strengthen me i don't know where the finances will come from use your word to strengthen me my mother has been diagnosed of an incurable disease use your word to strengthen me i just lost a job use your word to strengthen me i don't know how the future looks like the word is a strengthener it not only gives information we find hope in it are we blessed yes the comfort of scripture number three the third way that we are strengthened in this kingdom is by a direct impartation and an infusion of strength from the lord directly 
God can stand up in his might and majesty and impart strength upon a man. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. He said, stand up. And he said, I have no strength. And his spirit entered and speak upon my feet and he stood. So God can directly impart and infuse strength. Second scripture very quickly. Let's hurry up. I want us to pray. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren. So he's talking to believers. They who are of the fold. Finally, my brethren. Be strong. Not in your bank account. No. Be strong. Not in your uncle or auntie. Be strong, not in your pastor or prophet or apostle or teacher. Be strong, not in your father or mother. Be strong, not in your certificate or your gift. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Amplify puts it in a very powerful way. If you can give it to us, if that is possible, let's just look at Amplify. He said, in conclusion... Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Draw strength. To draw from you again. Again. We've come to draw. Draw. Draw from you again, again. I've come to draw. I've come to draw. Draw, draw, draw from you again. Impartation, impartation, impartation. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We already read that scripture. It's very, very important. You can draw strength from him. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. Please, let's look at it very quickly. Paul was crying to the Lord and asking him for help. Paul was weary. And here was the response of the Lord. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you and here's the technology for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore i would rather glory in my infirmities paul is saying that the power of christ may rest upon me verse 10 therefore i take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake for when I am weak mysteriously I am strong are we together God can impart strength upon you God can impart strength he can you can receive a surge of strength and may that happen to someone tonight that every door you have closed over your life and your destiny, you will go back and say, destiny, let's continue. From where we stopped four years ago. From where we stopped five years ago. Let me give us the last and then we'll pray. I want us to take some time to pray. How are believers strengthened in this kingdom? The fourth way is joy. The joy of the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse strength neither be ye dismayed or sorry or in pity 
it says for the joy of the Lord is not will be not was is present reality your strength neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord don't pack up your life don't wrap up your ministry don't wrap up your business don't wrap up your endeavor for the joy of the Lord is your strength Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 it says rejoice in the Lord always I used to think he said always but that's not what he said always as you go rejoice all the way any road and any place you find yourself let your disposition be that of joy rejoice in the Lord always and again I repeat rejoice why because in this kingdom you see my brothers and my sisters joy is like a fetcher that is what you use to draw from the wells of salvation when you lose joy there are many things that will not come to your life in fact the Bible puts it this way it says they that sow in tears it didn't say they will reap with joy he said they will reap in joy you will eat inside a kitchen so if you are not in that kitchen there's no meal you will reap in joy Psalm 67, we'll start from verse 1. Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Say amen. amen. Verse 2. That thy way may be known in the earth, thy saving health among the nations. Next verse. Let the people praise Oh God, let all the people praise thee. Yes, please. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Five. Let the people praise thee, O oh God. Let all the people praise thee. Uh-huh. Then shall the earth, the increase that has always been there but has refused to come out, that in praise and joy, the earth shall yield her increase and God, even our own God, shall bless us. Listen to me. You have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of remaining joyful. You have defeated life in no small way when you master the art of being unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life joy all the way joy all the way you stand before the coffin with tears coming out of your eyes but you raise a song of praise and worship you go to your atm and check and your balance is 1500 naira and it looks like you've not done anything with your life you stand before your board and you see five carryovers and it looks like there's no hope of moving forward please hear me hear me hear me let life always find you in joy joy is a choice joy is a choice you can choose to walk in joy it's a choice the joy of the Lord is my strength choose to walk in joy let me tell you this and this is something that gradually the continent of Africa and Nigeria is losing because we were one time purported to be the happiest people on earth but right now the spirit of depression is just coming around horizon you see young people looking as if they are old joyless people people who look dried like a fig tree what happened why should i rejoice look at the way my life is no sir to him that is joined to the living there is hope there is reason to be joyful are you hearing what i'm saying the bible talks about people talks about all kinds of circumstances happening and people dry up because there is no joy in the midst of them 
when you are joyful joy brings songs of worship when you are joyful it brings expressions of strength of hope and of peace joy is so powerful that it was used as one of the indices that verify and attest to the presence of the kingdom that when the kingdom of God is in a place meaning when his will is being done it will be characterized by the tripartite realities of righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost a state of merriment a state of excitement that is based on a revelation listen to me the revelation is I will joy in the God of my salvation there is a redeemer that is coming there is the lifter of men that is coming there is the anointer of men that is coming so although the fig tree may not blossom although there may not be olives on the vine although all of these things left and right may not seem to be manifesting the way you want you draw joy in the knowledge that there is a name that god is called the god of your salvation do you know what that means imagine a house burning and while you are looking at everything born you look at it and a time will come you will stop crying and you will start finding comfort the house was insured there is an insurance company that insured the house that means now that the house is bond it is time for your insurance to speak for you you have an agreement with them that for as long as you continue to pay your premium that when a disaster strikes they will take responsibility it is a mandate they have placed upon themselves so while you are watching your house bond you are regretting what is being born there you suddenly draw strength there is an insurance are you getting what i'm saying now that's what it means to rejoice in the god of your salvation the god of your salvation the word savior is the hebrew word jehoshua that's where you get the word joshua from the god that saves the one who saves are you getting what i'm teaching you tonight it's very very important so you stand and then you draw strength the insurance company is coming and when you call on the insurance company they come to stand and look at the building and value it and within months your building is back and not only back better what you wanted to put in before that you could not put now you have your chance you wanted to put two parlors before but the rigor of removing things now everything is burnt and now you have the opportunity to partition the house well and put the living room God is speaking to someone joy please be careful guard your joy the same way a wealthy person protects a Rolex in a safe guard your joy the same way a lecturer protects his certificate guard your joy the same way money is guarded in a bulk room in a bank protect your joy by all means protect your joy by all means it is your strength in this kingdom it is your staying power it is the guarantee that you will finish strong are we together yes so number one to be strengthened the revelation of the love of God number two the comfort of scripture you see look up please look up if you are a believer <coughs> if you are a believer and your word study life is not effective please obtain grace from God tonight to take your word study seriously because when life squeezes you it is it is written that will come out the word of God let it become your daily bread not one one verse per day no you should grow past that sit down 
with scripture study it it's like a deposit you are making the day you stand before goliath there is a scripture the day you stand before pharaoh there is a scripture the day you stand before saul there is a scripture the day satan himself comes to you there is a scripture the word of god and then number three the impartation direct impartation i believe that god will do this to our lives even as we pray a direct impartation of scripture and then number four joy koinonia access this mystery of joy like a river listen to me please listen to me life 24 hours already has by default programmed in it too many things to annoy you you will age yourself to death if you hand your life over to life to treat you you must define your possibilities the days that we live in now are days that joy must be a choice switch on your television and in five minutes you have had something that annoyed you you must choose to maintain your joy go to visit your child in school and you will see a teacher treating the child in a way you are waiting for your child to return with a wide result and you will see something that does not bring you encouragement hear me any other thing you base for your joy will disappoint you it must be the joy of the lord as your strength as god comforted someone tonight the joy of the lord choose to be happy you receive a call from home are you aware of the the kind of i mean there's no money anywhere we are going to die and you say mommy calm down why should i calm down because god is still the monarch of the universe there is always a way out two of you cannot be under pressure you choose to be under pressure or god under pressure he says the keeper of israel the keeper of the covenant not a person that means listen when cgc is locked the keys with someone if that person does not come we're in trouble so when we want to access a place the keeper of the key is important so when the bible said the keeper of israel you would think he's talking about the nation no israel means covenant there is the keeper of the covenant of my destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of your destiny there is the keeper of the covenant of koinonia there is the keeper of the covenant of the prophecy upon your life see let me tell you this look at me satan is a roaring lion if you allow his roar scare you you will never be able to defeat the lion and cut the head and move. No, 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 no. Life will stand and claim bold face for you. You must sustain the intelligence in the spirit to say with joy will I draw. They see you bending for a long time and wonder what you are doing. And all of a sudden you draw out prosperity, speed, increase, lifting, and while you draw it out people will just stand and say what is this the joy of the lord you're the god of awesome wonders i've tasted of your power Much more than I deserve. Help me. My eyes have seen. My ears have heard. The wonders of creation. The words you speak, come on. The words you speak, the things around your treasure have lifted me. You took away the chains and God that had me down. Oh, this 
listen to me it is in your lifetime you will build that house if it's in your lifetime a day will come you will not think about money again it is in your lifetime the anointing you seek one day you will no longer seek it because it's with you listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is in your lifetime that you will smile again there is a name God is called the God of Jeshurun he is called the one that rides upon the wings of the wind let God be true and let every man let every report medical report let every system be a liar let God be true and let every ministry report be a liar let God be true and let every academic report be a liar let God be true and let every financial report be a liar let God be true and every career report be a liar listen to me please hear me many years ago I remember one day I was sitting down somewhere in the campus and I saw a plane pass and I was looking at it and the Lord told me that the word will take you into that plane many times I believed him the Lord spoke to me that a time will come nations will come and will drink from that which he has put upon our lives I believed him listen you have gone too far with God to turn back remember Lot's wife remember Lot's wife husband and wife remember Lot's wife CEOs businessmen remember Lot's wife men and women of God remember Lot's wife that if you turn aside in the bay of battle your strength is small you must obtain grace to fight till you win you must obtain grace listen obtain grace to stand and face your fears fight and win oh they say you have cancer oh they say your genotype will never change that's nonsense obtain grace from god oh they say your children will never be responsible oh they say your life is finished see let god be true i'm teaching you how to win in life You must immerse yourself because the kinds the kinds of environment that Africa is brooding the kinds of environment that Nigeria is brooding is pungent I say that respectfully is pungent for greatness from television to internet to everywhere there's all kinds of nonsense that jam packs your ear sometimes you need to say hey when the music fades and I simply come we must be that generation you can shut away from the noise longing just to free something that's a word that will bless your heart there are times you need to off the TV, shut the laptop. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. Is that what you have required? It is within his power to make great and live. You search much deeper within the You look in into my heart. You are worshipping the one who sees into the heart of man. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. But it's all about you. But it's all It's all about please listen to what you are saying it's all about you it's all about you Jesus you 
are still going to sing this song and then we'll pray. It's nine. We'll pray for a few minutes. Listen. Listen. When you make it about your sickness, Benny Hinn was, and, and you know, I, I follow him a lot, and Benny Hinn was teaching one of his healing sessions. And he said he found out that those who receive from God are people who learn to forget about themselves. The moment you are conscious about yourself, the mountains magnify. They looked unto him. There was a brazen serpent that was lifted. And they looked unto him. Barus Kaliata. And they were, their faces were lightened. Illumination. And God took shame and fear from their lives. Tonight we are going to sing that song again. Please take it higher for me. Listen. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves and remind our generation that it is all about Jesus. And I, the ministry is about Jesus. The business is about Jesus. Because sometimes you can be trying to make money and the devil looks at you and says you are a money monger. You need to remind yourself and remind Satan that this is all about Jesus. There are times, listen to me, that you will look at your children and sometimes you will put your ego on the line. And he reminds you that it's not about your children. It's about Jesus. There is peace and rest when everything becomes about him. Nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Listen. For Jesus, you're the center. And everything revolves around you. Jesus. Koinonia, hear me. When God chooses to lift you, it's a choice he made. When God chooses to honor you, it's a choice he made. God chose to speak to us that this year is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And you may say, Apostle, we are just in November. You know how long it takes for God to do something? as long as his will allows if his will says now that's how long it will take you are willing and able please listen to what i'm telling you because you see satan is a seeker of attention satan is a seeker of time he seeks time using all kinds of distractions in your life and if you do not sustain the ability to set your eyes like a flint you will never be able to raise your children you will never be able to pay the bills you will never listen let me tell you see hear me when god becomes the center of your focus you keep looking at him and setting your gaze on him and you will not know when you are rising you will check and find out that you are not where you used to be again are you hearing what i'm saying now please hold the hands of someone by your left and by your right at the center of it all is you that i see is you that i see At the center of it all It's you that I see It's you It's you that I see There is power in your name ah. Miracles Miracles happen in your name As we lift our voice and pray, it's you, it's you that I see, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning to pray at about 3 a.m. Now listen, we are going to pray. And when I woke up, I was just walking around. I was not even praying. 
and the next thing the Lord told me go on your knees I just rested on the chair and I was in the spirit and the strange thing was I saw the level of speed things were unfolding in people's lives just like a new season listen listen I want to hear what I'm telling you I saw people buying vehicles getting houses moving I mean listen listen I, I mean what I'm saying you know how how do I put it now um, there's this thing in a when you, you have a, a any digital device and you are fast forwarding you can adjust the fast forwarding listen to me I was in the spirit when I saw this I was watching like a drama and then every time seasons are opening one of the ways there are many ways God shows me one either in a military military attire or number two the page of a book opening and suddenly I saw the page of a book opening immediately I saw this I came back and that's why the Lord told me to bring this message let me tell you my brothers and my sisters new seasons always don't look like it but for those who have strength lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. We are going to pray. And the first prayer point tonight is you are going to judge God faithful. Take your eyes away from whatever has not happened or has happened. And judge him faithful. Lift your voice and say, Lord, you are faithful. You are faithful. Both for the things you have done and the things that look like I'm not faithful. Faithful. Is someone praying? Koinonia judges you faithful. We judge you faithful. Saints of God pray. Mighty ones pray. Those who have been favored by the ancient one pray. Faithful God, hallelujah, you're the faithful God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up. To be faithful means to possess the quality of consistency. To be faithful 
means to possess the quality of unbendableness. To be faithful means to possess the quality of integrity, predictability, sameness. And there is a name God is called faithful and true. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I judge you faithful. Shake you are consistent. I trust your faithfulness. Please help those under the anointing. I judge you faithful. I judge you faithful. Consistent. Unchanging. Unbending. the same yesterday the same today the same forever we're praying you're not a man, oh, you're not a man, oh, you're the God who opens doors no man can shut. Number two, there is only one name. There is only one name with power to say. No system can say with power to say. I'm establishing the second prayer point. There is only one name. my salvation shift me to my destiny push me to prophecy lift your voice and pray let my life see your salvation break it 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 break it
The Bible says salvation belongs to the Lord. It is within his power to make rich. It is within his power to bless. It is within his power to lead. When God points at a man and says, this is my city to lead, there is nothing that can be done under the surface of the earth. Listen to me. Salvation does not just mean salvation from sin and Satan. It is the word soteria. It is also the word sozo. Are we together now? Soteria means to be grafted out into honor. It's a translation, a shift of realms, a shift of dimension, a shift of reality, a shift of results. Soteria. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. He says the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then he says turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. It is within his power. Point number three atmosphere she now says be broken Ray. Holy Spirit Holy Spirit come now heaven open is open before me but many are the adversaries it is within your power to dislodge the spirits programmed to hunt destinies the stargazers over the destinies of men it is within your power lift your voice like a priest and pray tonight I command powers I command devils spirits ordinances Pray for your business. Pray for your life. Pray for your home. Pray for your children. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your career. I command forces. I command spirits. I command protection. I command manipulative spirits. In the name of Jesus. Command by the power that created the heaven.
Koinonia, look at me. Satan will not fold his arms and let you raise godly children. Satan will not fold his arms and watch your ministry expand. Satan will not fold his arms and watch the wealth of the kingdom come upon you, knowing that you have the mindset that promotes Christ. Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your marriage. Satan will not fold his arms and allow peace in your family. You are going to decree, you are going to create. I like you to rebuke the devil and command his powers. Give way, give way, give way, give way by the spirit. Command every force that is not of the Christ over your prophecy, over your life, over your destiny. By the blood of the eternal covenant, by the name of Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, the last prayer point and we're done tonight. One of the ways that we know God is through the dimensions that he has revealed. He is healer. He is lifter. He is restorer. He broke himself into these dimensions so that the day you need that dimension of him, you can provoke it. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your hey, hey, your hey, hey, is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. One more time. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name, just breathe your name. what you are saying let the reign of restoration comes because you are the restorer let the, hold on let the reign of revival come let the reign of grace come. when you pray listen the bible says in isaiah chapter 15 i think and verse 32 or so until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then any man's desert can be turned for a fruitful vine any desert can be turned for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine be turned to a forest but the secret is that shower so when you say lord don't just send help send your name because the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous can run and they are safe the name of the lord is security the name of the Lord is defense. The name of the Lord is speed. The name of the Lord is restoration. The name of the Lord is deliverance. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. You are going to mention every dimension of the name of God that you need in this season.
to push you into prophecy. If it's restoration, call it. If it's healing, call it. If it's a miracle worker, call it. Lift your voice and pray. Let him restore your joy. Let him restore your prosperity. Let him restore your peace. Though your beginning be small, let your latter end. Call on the one who is the maker can make men. Call on the one who is a lifter. Hallelujah. The names of God. He can be healer. He can be restorer. He can be deliverer. Whatever it is that you need is covered in his name. His covenant name. YHWH Yahweh is his personal name. Hey. Hallelujah. Listen, please hear me. There is a name of God that can take you from where you are now to where prophecy demands you should be. You must find that name, find it in prayer. For some of you, it is the lifter. For some of you, is the restorer. For some of you, is the deliverer. For some of you, is the mighty man in battle. For some of you, is Ebenezer. For some of you, is El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. For some of you, it is the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Listen, let me add one more prayer. I apologize, our time is gone. You're going to pray, Lord, let nothing in my life steal my joy. Listen to me. Hear me. Soon we're going to be wrapping up Koinonia now, and many of you will return home. Many of you are already, some of our people have left, gone for various reasons. Some are finishing their exams, they're going. And let me tell you something. The world that we live in today, unfortunately, is saddled with all kinds of negative things. From reports from family, health reports, reports of statistics, reports of all kinds of findings. And you are embedded in a system that is full of all of these things. And most of them are complete nonsense. As far as your destiny and God's program is concerned, you will need to trust God for joy. Joy guard joy jealously some of you have lost your joy you walk with gloominess as if life has pressed you down can i tell you something listen to me the joy of the lord is real strength once you sustain joy you will watch your life continue to rise the joy of the lord is what guarantees harvest the joy of the lord is what guarantees finishing I took this Bible and I found out that there was both Genesis and Revelation. And at the end of it, God is still seated on the throne. On no account, in this Bible, kings had to, re, to relinquish their thrones. In this Bible, queens had to relinquish their thrones. In this Bible, nations had to relinquish their territory. But from Genesis to Revelation, there is an ancient one that remains seated. As proof that he is the monarch of the universe. Are we together?
so my soul find rest in the fact that there is the name of God pray that last prayer and we'll wrap up this session Lord joy let there be joy overflowing right now no room for sadness no no room joy in the joy of the Lord the joy that he joy that comes joy that empowers joy the joy. the joy Lord no matter what report I get from home your joy remains with me no matter what report I get in my office my joy remains with me no matter what results I see in my business in ministry joy hallelujah I pray for you in the name of Jesus may the revelation of this teaching that I shared with you provide tremendous strength for the journey ahead in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every lie of the devil over your destiny every lie of Satan over your life every lie of satan over your home over your family over your children over your finances over your spiritual life i decree and declare that in the name of jesus christ that lie goes down and goes down forever i pray for you for those of you who have lost the strength and the fortitude to continue in ministry in life tonight like the dew of Hammon, I pray let fresh strength be infused upon you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for any and everyone here who is being resisted by Satan by causes by yokes by activities of divination and the plots of evil I declare by the God of heaven I command and establish your liberty this night in the name of Jesus I speak to you by the Spirit of the Living God that everything God has spoken in your life he will cause you to be so aligned that it must come to pass I pray finally for your family I pray for your children I pray for your job I pray for whatever it is you're doing let the anointing and the grace for extraordinary fruitfulness the grace that commands strange favor the grace that commands open door and influence and lifting may that grace rest upon you finally I pray for the eyes of your spirit I pray for your ears in the name that is above all names the clarity and the accuracy of perception as far as your purpose is concerned receive it now thank you Heavenly Father please everyone stand our time is gone I like to make an altar call right now many of you listen to this teaching and whilst I was teaching the Holy Ghost was speaking to you and there are many of you here who are saying apostle if you give me an opportunity I want to start afresh with Jesus some of you are saying I've given my life to Jesus Christ but right now I need to rededicate my life sincerely your inside your outside Jesus is called the Prince of Peace many of you online are following from whatever nation of the world I'm going to count one to five and I want you to boldly unashamedly to leave your seat and come stand here aside from overflow three for time's sake i will request that you just move to your projector stand let me call on overflow one and two and the main auditorium and any other overflow please just run be hasty and come and stand here while we clap for them in honor of what god is doing one keep coming don't sit back the lord is speaking to you i'd like you to run god bless you this is a place of love you are greatly loved greatly loved and greatly cherished 
His presence is where we find strength. His presence is where we find life. Keep coming. Do not listen to the lie of Satan. There is always a way out. The Bible says there is hope for a tree even if it be cut down. Come. Come to Jesus. My dear ones, run to him. He is the way. He is the truth. He is life. Amen. If you are coming from outside, please come. Rush quickly. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for the bold step to come and truly surrender your life and your heart to Jesus. And some of you is a renewal and a rededication. Just lift your right hand. Believe that Jesus is here. I'd like you to set your gaze on him. Say after me, everyone. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe. Mean what you say. I believe that you are the son of God. Tonight, I receive your life in exchange for mine. I receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. And I declare that I reign in life. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of the flesh is broken in my life from tonight and forever. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I stretch my hands towards these precious ones. You have declared that whoever comes to you, you will in no wise cast away. We honor you, O oh God, for drawing these ones. This is what only Jesus can do. And Father, I pray that the grace that keeps will keep them. That they will continue to grow from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. I speak over your lives. May the lines fall for you in pleasant places. And may you have a goodly heritage. The Lord bless you. The Lord preserve you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, for all of you, thank you very much. There is a gentleman waving his hands. Please, all of you, look at me. God bless you. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Follow this gentleman. He will lead you to a group of people right away who will just talk with you. And then you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Please, let's celebrate them. Everyone, this way.